Welcome everyone, this is the newest episode of Generation BTS, the podcast where we review BTS albums. I'm Christine, I'm 29 and I've been in ARMY for a bit over a year now and with me I've got Leanne. Hi, I'm Leanne, I'm 33 and I've been ARMY now about eight, nearly nine months. Nice and also we have... Hi, I'm Natasha, I'm 19 and I've been ARMY for... Coming up to seven years. All right, we're all here. And today we are going to talk about the Wings 027 slash unit songs, mm-hmm. which would be interesting. So uh, last time we did, obviously, the solo songs. This time we'll sort of round out the album, which we're excited to do. Just in case anyone's new to the podcast, we want to say that we are not experts on music, BTS or K-pop. We're just fans of the boys sharing our opinions. And please be aware we do swear. Yay! Okay. I think we should start off, though. It's been a little while since we recorded the last one, so should we go over some happenings? The first one I've written down is Hobby Palooza. Oh, brilliant. Hobby Palooza was great. We obviously watched it at, like, 3 Mm a.m. Did you watch it, Natasha? Of course she didn't. She's a hobby (laughs) hater. (laughs) Okay, well, you missed that. It was great. It was so great. It It was really good. It was very good. Other than that, we've had the vlogs, all their vlogs. Those have been good. Yep, we've had um, Sean's vlogs. Yeah. Have you had a favourite vlog so far? Obviously Not RMs. It's RMs. <laughs> okay, well, is that from RMs? Uh, what is my favourite other than RMs? Okay. What was your favourite other than Youngies? Um, <laughs> sorry, isn't it? I thought, I thought RMs was Yeah, well, that's because RMs was the best. Yeah, well, he was, no, it wasn't the best thing. It was the best. <laughs> Jimin's was good. I thought it was very like. Oh no, JK's. I liked JK's. JK's was good. JK's as well. when JK went camping. Yeah. Yeah, that was wholesome. Yeah. I thought Jim was quite funny in the comments. It was like, oh my God, my mouth looks like a beak. I get it now. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> that was charming. Um, and then we had the new episodes of Run, which we loved. Yes, the Telepushy episodes. <laughs> Telepushy. Yeah. Such brilliant run episodes. Uh, I, they were moving. I was moving fast. You cried the first one and the second one. I did, yeah. Cried <laughs> at the end of the first one, like, I hope they find each other. And then at the end of the second one, you were like, they found each other. Yeah, yeah. And just then I was uh, like, when's the next run? And you're like, it's just a special. I was like, why would they do this? Yeah, but then they weren't planning more episodes at the end when they when they were in the restaurant. They were like, oh, what should we do next time? And they were like, pole dancing. <laughs> Jimmy said pole dancing. Jimmy wanted yeah. to do pole dancing. You, you wanted to do flying yoga. I think that would flying be cool yoga as yeah. well. Hilarious. Yeah. And no, you, you wanted to do the rhythmic gymnastics or like, yeah. yeah, what they do in the Olympics. And JK wanted to do flying yoga. And then we've had these new photo book things that they're doing now. Mm. Uh, me, myself, and JK's a vampire. And that comes up again in this episode. He's, yeah. He's really like picked up this. Wings theme, I think, in yeah. his photo shoot. The, yeah, he's on the Twilight vibes. He is. He's a Volturi. I agree. Are you going to be buying his photo book? Maybe when we go to Korea. Oh Yay! yeah, that's the main news. We're going to keep that up for the end. But actually, yeah, now we're going to Korea. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, we have booked. We're going to go for the concert in October, although TBC on the <laughs> ticket getting. But yeah, that's what the plan is anyway. And if we don't get tickets, then that's fine. You know, yeah, we'll, we're we'll still gonna... be there. And then we've had Bad Decisions. Yeah, Vocal Line. Yeah, featuring Snoop Dogg and Benny Blanco. It's it's fun. It's sketchy. Yeah, it's fun. I don't love it. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, it's meant to get on the radio. I feel like some of other members could have had like a better, like actually using them instead of being like, oh yeah, like this member's in it. And I'm being like, you can hear him for like three seconds and then it's mainly just JK. Yeah, that's true. And also like Snoop's rap part, it's, it's fine, but it doesn't go massively well with the rest of the song. And I'm a bit like, if the rap line were there, then that would have been better. <laughs> but I mean, I obviously get that they need like a big, if you're going to do a radio play song, then probably getting a big like Western artist feature is a good way to do it, I suppose. I also think the um, music video is a bit, yeah, it's not K-pop to what I'm used to. Well, and the boys aren't even in it. No, I know. That's when they were like, oh, the music video is going to be out on this day. And I'm like, okay, great. And then when it came out, I was like, why would you even tell me about this? <laughs> it's like, it's it's funny. I heard some people were a little like upset by it. Cause they thought it was a bit shady. Yeah, well, they thought that ARMY came off as a little obsessive. 
yeah and like maybe not the most like thought through like when he took the cake in the car on the way to the oh, concert and it was like like no one would do that like it's yeah, yeah. and then the cake spills everywhere and then he's a day yeah yeah it just actually come off as quite mindless yeah know? exactly i'm sure it wasn't like badly intended because obviously benny blanco didn't genuinely seem excited to yeah, be doing he is the song a, he is genuinely amused Blanco. i don't know yeah it could have been worse could have been better yep yeah all right should we get to the reason we're here yeah okay so as i said we're talking about the wings ot7 and unit songs today we've already done sort of an intro to the album and everything so i'm not gonna really do that again if you want to hear about the big hit blurb and everything then listen to the last episode part one yeah so uh, so yeah anyone have any big overall thoughts on the wings album as a whole or the non-solo songs i really like wings i like that we split it up into two parts yeah the main thing i feel about wings is i'm just so sad about how late we are to this party yeah yeah we watched the wings tour we watched the wings concert we watched all of these wings performances and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> should have been there yeah i think by now they've really formed haven't they they're like fully formed within the craft i guess that happens in the most beautiful moment of life but yeah they're really polished in wings yeah and it's they quite had a, a self-assured album yeah and then they've had a much bigger budget and everything because of the success of h2oh yeah i agree with you i think there's a clear like divide in the album mm-hmm. so because i think obviously the themes that we talked about in the first one demian and good versus evil and all that sort of stuff like the intro of blood sweat and tears and then the seven solo songs very much you can tie all of those into that theme Mm -hmm. the rest of them i'm not so sure Mm. they seem to be like oh and then we have to talk about the haters and then we have to talk about army and then we have to talk about like how awesome girls are (laughs) and then (laughs) we need to sample this famous song (laughs) and like a political song yeah and and then a dance track a dance track (laughs) vocal line rap line solo is done done we took (laughs) yeah yeah we'll get back to that in some in some regards that they they do what do you have any thoughts? Yeah. I think along with the solo stuff, it's like nice that you've got a decent chunk and like quite a few other songs that's got them all in that like you can also listen to. So even if you wanted a solo, you can flip back, but then you've still got like pretty much could be like a album on its own to just have. Yeah, it's a it's a long album, isn't it? Aaron said in his V Life that it's a deliberate album. The design of it was deliberate. They put a lot of work in it. Yeah, and he also said in an interview that he thought that Wings was like the pinnacle. Yeah, or would be the pinnacle of their career. Yeah, yeah. little did he know. But yeah, like clearly they had a had big ambitions for this, mm. and it's all it's about ambition as well, I suppose. I sort of tried to look a little at the overall themes of it, and I think it's they're looking into the meaning of like fame and fortune and they're looking at the psychological theory behind Demian but not as like overtly as Map of the Soul Mm -hmm. but they're using the sort of themes of God versus evil and temptation to like explore the good and the bad sides of their lives as idols really and they've achieved this certain level of success so they're using temptation as an image as an allegory for their ambition and the allure of like fame and fortune tempting them down this path that the parents and teachers that we talked about in other albums Mm -hmm they wouldn't have wanted them to go down this path. And there's a like an interesting juxtaposition, I think, of like ambition and greed. Mm. They seem to be thinking like, oh, my ambition, my ambition, my ambition, it's like good, but it's sort of like merging on bad because it gets to be greed at a certain point. Yeah, Which you I'm, can see that in some of the songs coming up right on that. Yeah. It does do a good job of tying the school era and the most beautiful moment in life through to love yourself because you have all this stuff about choosing your own path and then through wings i think they sort of develop the idea of like choosing your own path is a good thing whereas there can also be bad effects and bad side effects and you might like become too ambitious so that you verge on greedy or you might make the wrong choices in your idol career or whatever they're sort of acknowledging that there's good and bad in everything in every path Mm. whereas by love yourself you're like okay, well, I'm happy with my good and bad and the choices that I've made, but now it's time to like be happy within myself and love myself while acknowledging that good and bad, I think. And on the greed 
point like ambition they've never mentioned greed at all right prior no so it's all about ambition being the best of themselves like striving for this big dream and now you've got that dream and you still want you don't necessarily want more now but could it turn into something negative mm. and then within that throughout some of these lyrics you get references to them being tired all eyes on me you're starting to really sense that the bad the, sides the of pressures fame. of fame yeah starting to weigh in and them to question does me pursuing this mean I'm a good person or a yeah. bad person? Am I adding enough to the world? Am I? Yeah. Is it because of my ambition or wanting to give back or wanting to contribute something? Or is it because of my greed and my money and my wanting fame and fortune? This occurred to me very late on, but I think the metaphor of wings is quite elegant because like in the first couple of songs that we'll talk about, they're reflecting on like the evil, good versus evil. And they're using the imagery of like the fallen angel a lot. Mm-hmm. And like someone who's had their wings clipped but in the obviously in the final song in outro wings they're like oh army has given us wings and we'll fly towards our destiny so yeah. there's a whole turnaround and the bad and the good of of wings like as a concept as well and the equus references right there mm-hmm. you can use your wings but it can ultimately lead and lead to a massive downfall and i think like Icarus i is think a, you can see that arms tie in with the worries of losing it all yeah I did write, write down that at a press conference, RM and Sugar talked about the concept of facing and defying temptation when young is, one is young and impressionable. So RM said that the harder a temptation is to resist, the more you think about it and vacillate. <laughs> that, that uncertainty is part of the process of growing. And Sugar talked about the album relaying an optimistic determination to use our wings to go far, even if we are met with temptations in life. So yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of temptations as part of being an idol, right? Like be a oh, lot of so much loads, yeah. There are a load of people like trying to lead you astray just to like get a story in the paper and yeah. All that money, drugs and girls. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this album it displays both the benefits and the drawbacks of ambition and drive, because you have the army songs and you have the hater songs and you have got the oppositions. I think that's how you link the later parts of the album back to the overall theme. Mm. And the sort of ending of the most beautiful moment in life, right? Like yeah. The rounding yeah. off of that, like you now don't have the benefit of you from recklessness to some extent. Yeah. You have to take responsibility. And I think when you start taking that responsibility, that's when you're choosing your path. Mm-hmm. That's when you're tempted by different ideas. You're taking on those responsibilities. They could be right or wrong. Mm. And those choices really come. Whereas the most beautiful moment in life era is very free and yeah fun and and you've got more like openness whereas here at this point in their career they're very much have arrived and this is where they are so what are you going to do yeah exactly. yeah what are these big choices you're going to take yeah and I think it's in the we're on the stage as well which is the documentary behind the wings tour they I sort of asked them like oh do you have any like big goals or everything that you're hoping to achieve with this tour and they're like no we actually we've achieved all our goals now mm-hmm. so I guess they also then have a reflection of like okay well I've arrived at where I wanted to be am I do I feel like I've con- I'm contributing what I expected to contribute? And like, am I doing the right thing, the wrong thing with the path that I now chose? Because from starting as trainees up till now, it's been like run, run, run towards this goal of the world tour, for example, or the run, number one run. in Korea or whatever. So now they kind of have to like set out a new course. Mm. And then, yeah, connecting it to Demian, just in case someone didn't listen to the previous episode, which I'd urge you to do. Um, <laughs> It's called yeah. Wings, part one. <laughs> yeah, Wings the Solos. Demian, obviously the book by Herman Hess from 1919, is very much around the the ideas around good and evil, and it focuses on this god of Braxis that accepts the good and evil within people and sees the world as a whole and not just sort of the, the good parts singled out. So there's no, like, heaven and hell. It's just a, just a world. So, yeah. Should we uh, get started then? Intro Boy Meets Evil. Ooh, that's me. Obviously, it's Hobie's big intro and his big solo. So it was a big moment for Hobie. Big, big yeah. moment. It's his first solo. Uh, it's his first solo, his first, first intro. First and only intro. Yeah. So yeah, Intro Boy Meets Evil. It was written by P-Dog, J-Hope and RM and it was produced by P-Dog. And the lyrics, it sort of opens with... The light of my future is dimming. Because of my childish love, I lost my way on a path of a dream. From what I saw, it's sort of three references, right? So, wanting him being a street dancer when he was young, 
and illustrating that because of his childhood love, he's now found his path. So his mm-hmm. love of dance, being a street dancer, has led him to be one of him as dancer, but also these extra things in rapper and idol. Yeah. But then within that, he lost his path because he's not just the person that he set out to be as a child. He's grown, he's got more, there's more about him, there's more pressures. Um, the reference to the universe story is obviously about his mom leaving a name at the fairground. And I did write universe story and Demian, but then I put in brackets Christine. <laughs> so I'm assuming <laughs> you can tell us what this Demian reference is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I suppose the Demian reference would be that the whole book is about losing your child's understanding of the world and the breaking out the shell yeah exactly like moving into a uh, position where you want to you know grow out of the like idyllic life that you've seen as a child and then sort of find the the truth as they put it there's some really good word play around sharpening a knife so it goes i sharpened my knife every day but because of my uncontrollable greed my knife became dull for me that conjured sort of trying harder and harder until you reach your peak but then the tip of the knife and the thing that's driving you becomes dull because even when you've achieved it, it doesn't have that sharpness yeah. of when you wanted it. So you Just finally, more, more, more. it's never enough, mm. which I thought was brilliant. And then the next sort of line goes, the sharp realities. So he said, the sharp realities that I feel more and more every day, red blood staining from being torn apart right by reality. I never thought that greed would become the horns that calls upon hell, breathe. And what I got from that is like the sharp realities of the realities of the success mm. and the success not necessarily being everything that you thought it would be. Yeah. The greed would become the horns that calls upon hell, breathe. That's where I really got that tempted into more, got all this ambition and then this ambition slowly becoming greed. And then the next line that I've got is the music box. The music box of tragedy echoes. So really early Jack in the Box references, Pandora's Box. One of the tracks on it is called Music Box, right? And he has the little chime in. Yeah, so it's enjoyed. really nice to see Hobie's narrative now. Yeah. I think in a way that we would have necessar- never necessarily appreciated. Mm-hmm. What I get from this is just a sense of trueness. Yeah. So he is actually who he yeah, is and those references these... matter. And then the last line that I wrote down was, when I woke up, I was already surrounded by landmines surrounded by people stairs that can't be touched i cry for a miracle in this reality rewind and i think that's about that's it now right you can't yeah you can't go out on the street you can't have a normal life um you can't take it up, take it back you can't take it back no. these are the choices that you've made yeah and then that comes up when he says i was an idiot addicted to the sweetness i didn't want to let go of the devil's touch yeah so you're sort of like stuck I you wanted this, mm. got it. It's come with consequences. Yeah. And that's the sort of boy meets evil, right? That's the, yeah, yeah. these are the consequences of the choices oh and the ambitions God, yeah. that you've had. They've this seen is the, the evil. Side. Yeah, you've seen the darkness you've and the darkness, the darkness is. What do another you... epiphany. <laughs> 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 I've been having epiphanies like all month. That way, <laughs> mad about wings. I was home while Christine was doing her wings research. And it was only like a 30 minute clip. But in that 30 minutes, it took her about three or four hours to watch it because she'd pause it every couple of minutes and be like, oh, I've just realised something. And then I'd sit there really you. politely and be like, go on, tell me. And then she'd tell me this big me every time. But <laughs> there were varying levels. Yeah, of some, some of them were good. I'll share all of them throughout this recording, don't worry. And then you've got the sort of end, which is the breathy vocal. Too bad, but it's too sweet. It's too sweet. It's too sweet. It's too evil. Yeah, it's evil. It does end on, yeah, it's evil. It is the evil that he's met, yeah. You didn't include the quote about the lips. There's because, because those, those lips, lips were too sweet. sweet. Yeah, I threw away my future because I was drunk in love, which I put sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Stop reading sexily into my boy's lyrics. <laughs> it is sexy. Temptation is sexy. But yeah, Blood Sweat and Tears is definitely sexy. Yeah. It's important. I think we've kind of talked about them. I think it's about like ambition verging on greed. It's quite probably quite like an, a personal one for him because I know he's talked about that since like Mm. and even in like arson right he talks about like money like fame and all the sort of stuff and then he's like Bernal that comes back Mm. up a lot with him and in the song that he made for B which is 
disease he talks about mm. the same like oh I'm ill like my ambition's so bad that like it's made me not mm. able to rest and not mm. able to take a break so um <laughs> take a break. and obviously we know like from what he said about Hobbitpalooza that uh, how much he was like preparing oh and, he was so stressed yeah stressing and like obviously it resulted in an amazing performance and um, I'm sure he's very proud of it but at the same Is time it, it comes it? at a cost yeah mm. which obviously fits in really well with the theme of the album mm. and sort of when does good become evil and it, it, is it okay that something that you're doing has a good side and a bad side and, mm. and yeah I know you're eating but what are your thoughts on it <laughs> there's fractions forming in our relationship between me and Natasha <laughs> when it comes to Hobie so she's gonna say that she absolutely loves it it's sexy oh sexy sexy's up on fine it's nice to listen to and then imagine that you like getting bit on neck by JK it's Hobie's vocal. And? <laughs> okay. Should we go into the performances? Yeah, we should. So the right. MV, it starts in a bright room. Well, we have the RM's quote from Demian first. Ah, yes. Yeah, so he's, again, if you've not listened to the solos, what are you doing? But <laughs> for all of the solo um, maybe short solo films, haters, maybe, maybe they're, they're just, just OT7, OT7 biases fans. for life. Fine, if that's the case, then fine. In all the short films for the solo songs, there's a quote from Demian. So for this one, Arm does this quote about having shaken hands with the devil and being in the devil's clutches, which I believe is just from after Sinclair, the main character, has his first meeting with the dark brown, which is when he lies about stealing apples. Ah. So I guess what we just said about them finding the first sort of temptations is quite on the money. So then it goes into like this big archway and Hobie's lit up. He's wearing this gorgeous outfit, which is like the white silk shirt mm-hmm. with the sleeves. It's like quite loose. Jeans, it's very it loose. It flies up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then the tight jeans with the cutouts on the knee. So he starts where he's crouched his knees and out there and then he sort of stands up. He walks into the darkness mm. and then it just blows up and he begins what can only be the most intense, amazing dance sequence I've ever seen yeah you're right he's very very sexy yeah <laughs> um, yeah the dance is incredible like it's the, so emotive the bit where he like leans back mm-hmm. um on like one arm and then switches the arms and then there's the bit where he like puts his hand like his leg right up next to his face and then like wraps his arms around his legs oh and yeah and he like kicks himself in the head yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> mental yeah and there's the bit just before that when he does the jump and the whole like yeah. floor cracks yes and like yeah. I believe that he like could actually do that yeah and the structures around him breaking obviously symbolizes the destroying the childhood world and this mm. yeah and then the wings come in yeah there's wings behind him as well and there is there's loads of abs yeah I told you it's Jesus. a loose fitting shirt and like loads of jumps and raising your arms and stuff so you know in physics um, <laughs> thank you physics yeah. mvp gravity is the mvp yeah. in this music video not the stylist no. it's gravity yeah yeah it's amazing yeah it's really good there's also these like and they do this a lot in the wings the like visual offerings in general where they sort of split between you see him like in a normal light normal setting and then all of a sudden he's in this dark setting with all the like neon paint mm. and stuff like that which also occurred to me really late on i think that this might have been one of my epiphanies oh, on. that that's the light and the dark realm oh, that they're interesting. flipping between or i think so anyway and yeah i think that's all the symbolism i could glean from nice. this <laughs> i love dessert oh the red hair orange it's orange it's like the same as in blood some tears right it's yeah like like orange. burnt orange there we go should we talk about the 2016 Mama performance then? I think we'll talk about it here because it has Boy Meets Evil. Obviously, they also do Blood, Sweat, Tears. And then there's also Fire, which we're not going to talk about. But it's a, it's a really incredible set. It's their first, like, long Mama performance. So it happens with JK suspended, like, over the stage. He's doing the, like, crumpled pose. Yeah. And, and his arms are out to the his side. His arms are so out. He's kind of making a cross. Oh, references. Yeah. And then it goes to one of the platforms where the stage is, where Hobie's on the blue platform. Yeah. And he starts just smashing out the same choreo as in the MV, mm-hmm. and then the blue fades out and the red fades in, and then you've got freaking Jimin stood there blindfolded and lies playing, 
and Jimin's just doing this gorgeous choreo from line. And then it pulls out, Blue reignites again, and Jimin and Hobie just do fucking like the most amazing synchronized dancing. Jimin's still blindfolded. Whilst Jimin's blindfolded, yeah. and they like reach out to each other, they drop down, then they do like the flip onto the back arm. I know how dancing works. Like it's one, two, three, four, and you do it on the beat, but like, how do you control your body so that when you fall down, yeah. you fall at the exact same speed of another person yeah. whilst blindfolded? And Just mesmerised. Well. So and Jimin is shorter. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jimin pulls the blindfold off and it's all really sexy. And, and then they move in while all the others join them on stage and then they do blood, sweat and tears. Yep. They all, I wrote, they all look like beautiful baby vampires. Yeah, they've got um, some of the sparkly jackets, haven't they? Yeah, Tay's got the really sparkly gold jacket and Sugar's got the, like, red one with the, like, big, like, ruffle collar thing. Mm-hmm. He really looks like Dracula. RM's got the red velvet one, looks a bit like a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> wizard vampire. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got, like, stars and yeah. circles on him. Yeah. Jake has got some like beautiful blue contacts with mm. the choker. So whenever yeah. he looks in the camera, you can just really see it. And then we get the out of control Oof. homoeroticism I've put here <laughs> of Jin and Tay. And Jin sort of sits on the stage. Tay walks up to him. He sits down behind him, sort of rolls his head backwards as if he's like getting ready to pounce. <laughs> and then he sort of tosses his jacket and shirt down from his shoulders and you can see the scars where the wings were Mm -hmm. so he's like the fallen angel who lost his wings which we'll return to in blood sweat and tears and then he sort of grabs over Jin's eyes and sort of down his chest and sort of (gasps) runs his lips along his shoulder like to his neck and sort of breathes he leans sort of back with this like wicked grin on his face and then you like hear the thunder Tasta kind of starts bouncing and then they sort of disappear into the stage floor and mental (laughs) it's like not appropriate behavior. yeah <laughs> i wrote it's fucking sexy yeah <laughs> and the v line Aram said about blood sweat and tears that young thought it was too dirty mm. and i think this is a virgin on dirty yeah i think mean, the line between sexy and dirty and this is dirty yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's because of taste phase acting i think if it wasn't for the face acting it would be not fine but like it would be something else <laughs> whereas <laughs> whereas with all those like it's just it's super homoerotic that's all i can say about it and then the others come up and then they do fire again yeah 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 even jin's breathing really heavily yeah i can remember after instagram was just going nuts and the mama that mama performance were like really hyped up so that was like first mama performance that i saw i were in art and in some tasks that you had to do in art you were allowed to use laptops and I'd just go on and be like, mama, and be like <laughs> scrolling for it and trying to find old clips. They were doing like countdown days and everything like that. There were loads of content on it. So I was just like, oh, mama, mama, mama. Ah, oh, jealous. And then it paid dividends, right? It wasn't like a, you got hyped up and then disappointed. No. You got hyped up and then... And then it was boom, amazing. Boom. Then all the uh, smut fanfics come. Of course. Yeah, not, I think they're, I'm not surprised. they're really inviting those in with that. Ship us, please. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if it would have been JK and T. Yeah, no, like, people would have lost the internet their... would have broke. Yeah. Anyone want to say anything else for the intro? It's brilliant. Yeah, great job from Hobie. Good, good. All right, let's move on then to the main one. It's blood, sweat, and tears time. Happy which time. Is... Yeah. <laughs> That's not the answer. Blood, Sweat and Tears was written by P-Dog, RM, Sugar, J-Hope, Hitman Bang and Kim Do-Hun. And it was produced by P-Dog. It is their first Korean number one single. And Not surprised. it was also a number one on the Japanese Oricon charts and the Billboard World charts as well. And it leads on, I think, quite well from the intro. It picks up the themes of Temptation. And definitely like plays into the deeper meaning of the album and it's sort of weighty in that way i think but then the temptation angle is also quite handy for just doing something really nice nice and lovely and, and pretty and alluring and sexy sexy and dirty sexy, sexy and dirty and, sexy. and jimmy's like eating the apples yeah. and he's all like oh yeah. yeah it's deep and meaningful but also sexy <laughs> so jimmy iconically starts off this with some sort of I've written that they're 
gritted teeth vocals. He sort of really like mm. chews on the words, doesn't he? Where he says, my blood, sweat and tears, my last dance, take it all away. And yeah, it's a, it's a strong opener. Mm. Um, and then uh, JK follows that up where he says, my blood, sweat and tears and my cold breath, take it all away. According to the Genius Lyrics, RM said in an interview that blood, sweat and tears isn't like a colloquial expression in Korean. So they say shed blood and sweat. Oh, um, nice. But he said it's an album by a rapper he likes called Ace Hood that sort of led him into that saying. And he thought it gave off an uneasy feel. But then he thought that other people might see it as like sexy or dirty. But then he was like, oh, no, it doesn't sound dirty. So that's like a win. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't sound dirty. It doesn't sound dirty. We're going to do is we're going to follow him with all of these sexy videos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Blood, Sweat and Tears is also, Arab and P Dog were talking a lot around this concept of killing me softly. Oh, yeah. And like how something can really like hurt you, but you love it over time. It slowly starts consuming you and you start to die. And therefore, that's where he'd started to develop Blood, Sweat and Tears. Okay. He said he'd written it like 20 plus times, trying to get a song that would represent that. Yeah. So the rap opens with Sugar's part and he goes, my blood, sweat and tears, my body, mind and soul. I know they're all yours. This is a spell that will punish me. And then there's what I've called Arms Porn Verse. Oh, no. <laughs> Peaches and cream, sweeter than a sweet. Um, oh, he goes, Peaches and cream, sweeter than sweet, chocolate cheeks and chocolate wings. But your wings are the devil's. There is bitter next to your sweet. Do we think that he means the mouse porn references? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> no! Maybe we don't want to put that on him, but also if you go on our dictionary and look up these themes then you will find out what they are what pictures and cream yeah no yeah and I'm chocolate about wings chocolate as wings. well no yeah <gasps> yeah i mean we know that he's we're he's aware of your is in the porn yeah <laughs> because of their um computer that he broke <laughs> jim installs that so it's possible that he knows what this is but we also don't want to assume it could be just about, you know, chocolate being a temptation. Yeah, I hope he sort of follows RM's lead. So he goes, kiss me, it's okay if it hurts. Just make it as tight as that I can't feel the pain anymore. Baby, it's okay if I get drunk. I'll drink you in deep now, deep into my throat, the whiskey that is here, which also, you know. Yeah. These <laughs> lyrics are filth. These lyrics are super dirty. Sure um, is right. This is too dirty. <laughs> He's right, my boy. My precious angel, baby. But his line's coming up and it's not so great. No, no. <laughs> not so great in a great way. Right, so then they do the chorus, but they've ended on the dance break with the I want it more and more and more. Money, with, money, money. Yeah. And then do, 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 do. <laughs> that bit. And then Hobie comes back and it's some more stuff. It doesn't matter if it hurts. Tie me up so I can't escape. Hold me tight and shake me up so that I can't come to my senses. Wow. Again, Hobie, it's not appropriate. <laughs> no, no. And then Sugar goes, kiss me on the lips. A secret just between the two of us. Deeply poisoned by the jail of you. I can't worship anyone but you. And I grew, knew that Grail was poisoned, but I drank it anyway. Not as filthy. <laughs> It's not as filthy one. Yeah. And then actually the chorus comes in again and then the bridge goes, kill me softly. Close my eyes with your caress. I can't resist it anyway. I can't even escape anymore because you're too sweet. And then there's no finishing chorus, but there's the outro where Jimin goes, my blood, sweat and tears over and over again while they do the the dancing. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> that was... So we need to go and like power ourselves down with some ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> more intense than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So obviously they're using the theme of like temptation and the romantic imagery of like kiss me on the lips and so on as a, an allegory for their sort of willingness to sacrifice anything for success. Like the fame being the fickle mistress. As, mm. as you can, uh, fame is the fickle mistress. Yeah. So the like, yeah, the, the temptress is the... The fame and the success, I think they want to get up, but obviously it's all the love. You, you can see it. You can the see love it. interest could be the temptation. Oh, yeah, but that's love and the pain that it brings, right? Yeah. I want to be with you, but love is pain and I'm still getting hurt by this, but I'm so tempted. Yeah. Because of you're so dirty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So it can be seen in both ways then. I think the like fame angle is more on par with the album but obviously it's also meant to get you like 
aren't Hot. bothered, right? So <laughs> the romantic imagery is definitely still there. All right, so, thoughts on the lyric smash? Sexy. I think we're agreed. We're agreed. In, 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 in agreement on that one. All right, let's get on to this MV. At least there's art references in this. Yes, back to the art and the intellect. Away yes. from the sleeves. Away from the sleeves. We like to combine them on this podcast. So yeah, the MB, they walk in in pairs. So you have Sugar and Jimin, RM and JK, Hobie and V, and then Jin on his home as normal. I don't know whether you'd say it's a universe MB. It definitely picks up, up the themes of the universe, but it's not like a part of the universe story. There's no like day in the universe story where like, oh, and then there's the day where they went to the museum and like, <laughs> Jin saw the painting. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so the young line members are all sort of teaching or showing the Makne line something. So the RM is like reading to JK. Hobi is showing Tay the statue of the goddess Demeter. She was sort of the goddess of grains, but also she had strong links to death and the underworld, which was like mm-hmm. the good and the evil in one. And that's like a theme of all the Grecian and like antique gods that they're referencing here. Like those gods were much more human like they were jealous and they killed each other and like all that sort of stuff they were not just like oh yeah my god i'm so precious and great and uh, yeah peace in the world yeah exactly so there's also a statue of aphrodite the goddess of love but also of lust um and then there's one of the demigod perseus holding the head of the temptress medusa (gasps) yeah so uh, getting on that temptress theme and then we get a shot of Jin looking at the painting called The Fall of the Rebel Angel by Peter Burgle the Elder, which is based on an allegory in the Bible, which details the banishing of Satan and his followers from heaven and making Satan the fallen angel. Apparently he was banished because he thought too highly of himself, like he was too greedy and ambitious. He sort of oh. saw himself at, at the level of, of God and they were like, no. No, you're not a God. <laughs> yeah. And then he's standing between a black and a white archway, which represents the good and the evil. Wow. Yeah. So in the next shot, they're on the couch. There are seven chandeliers in the room with them, but two of them are on the ground. And that symbolizes, obviously, the fallen angel. It's the same in Jimin's live performance. So there's one chandelier above him and one on the ground. Mm Mm-hmm. And Tay is also sitting on the ground. He's the only one sitting on the ground, which I thought maybe foreshadows his role in the MV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And behind them, there's a neon sign that says the Tempters, which is like... Oh, they are the Tempters. Yeah, factual. factual. <laughs> which is just super accurate. Yeah. And did a really good job with that sign. <laughs> well done, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Sugar covers Jimin's eyes. And then the first dance move that Jimin does is sort of removing a hand, and it looks like it's hobbies this time from his eyes. And apparently in this sort of Nietzsche... Jungian theory unblinding mm-hmm. symbolizes the innocence blindfold being taken off to reveal reality. Oh, yeah. There's a scene with JK on the swing with the lollipop, which again links to the childhood world. Okay. But then there's the shot of him suspended in the air with the feathers around him. Um, and in all of these shots, including from the Mama performance, he sort of copies the same pose. So he's got his head leaned back, one leg bent, and like arms out oh. to the side. Which I've heard as well as the same post that he ends up in after he's hit by the car in the universe story. Um, and it's Jesus on the cross, right? Because Jesus got one leg bent on the cross. Yep. Yeah. And in the notes for Love Yourself Tear, actually, after the car crash, he describes the accident as, I thought my body was floating, but actually it was the hard floor. So he's like <sighs> floating. Yeah. And then behind him is the painting of the Lament of Icarus. It's by Herbert James Draper. And obviously we talked about Icarus already. But for anyone who doesn't know, Icarus received wings from his father, Daedalus. But the wings were attached by wax. And then Icarus flew too close to the sun, even though his father had warned him not to. Mm -hmm. And the wings detached. And then Icarus plummeted to his death, which tells the story about the dangers of hubris and the benefits of moderation, according to the internet. And some see this as Jungkook playing the role of Icarus and then RM plays Daedalus because they're paired in the MV. But the young lion is definitely still very much performing their roles as the mentors to the Mm -hmm. Maknae line, which we also saw in the short films. RM is surrounded by books. He's recalling his universe character who loves books. Mm. And he's lighting the sugar cube Mm. over the glass of absinthe, which symbolizes him tapping into the temptations of the dark world. 
Huge. And as he lights it, we see the flaming sparrowhawk image. Mm -hmm. which and then is... he rubs his mouth. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. And there's the, in the Japanese music video, I don't think we need to talk about it separately, to be honest, but um, in the Japanese music video, we see that RM brings the jink to Jungkook and then Jungkook drinks the absinthe and sort of hallucinates. <gasps> Hobi has a scene next and he sits in this Roman bath and he's inspecting an arrow. And behind him is a sculpture of Michelangelo's Pieta, which is the Virgin Mary holding the dead body of Christ. So again, he's paired with this ideal mother imagery. Yeah. But the face and the torso of Christ have not been carved out, which symbolizes the process of finding oneself through individuation, but also in terms of growing up and learning about yourself through shattering your childhood illusions. Mm. There's also a scene where he sort of sits in the Roman bath and you can see this, the um, statue in the reflection and he sort of drags his hand through the reflection so that it shatters. And oh, he yeah. um, later also does this like torture dance with water splashing in front of it. And he's sort of rejecting the image of the ideal mother is what I got from that, but I'm not sure that's right. He shoots the arrow that he's inspecting towards Tay, which is another foreshadowing, I think, of his eventual role in the MB. But Tay is protected by the veil. So the splatter of paint appears on the sheet. Tay's seen under sheets a lot, both in the MV, uh, this MV and the Japanese version, which symbolizes the protection that his universe character sort of gave himself by hiding his pain, because it's a known thing that he would never really like share with the boys about what happened in his house and his mm. abusive father and all wow. that sort of stuff. So he already knows the Dark Realm. And I think this might be a tenuous connection, but this was one of my epiphanies that I think the reason that they're sort of linked in the video is because Horby's storyline evokes these bad memories for Tay because they're both abandoned by their mothers. Mm. Other than this, they don't interact in the MV, which is the only Maknae Young Lion pairing where there's no sort of guidance from one to the other. Oh. And then we have Jimin and Sugar. They sit on this glass floor in the middle of a room. Jimin holds an apple representing the first sin and Yoongi has the blindfold. I think it links to the, like his first sin being the lie about the incident in the flower arbitorium, mm -hmm. which is yeah. the same as the character in Demi and Lion about the apple. And the broom actually is taken from this movie called Chat Room. And it's about people who meet online and then encourage each other's bad behavior. And it's the exact same room. Like it definitely is taken from that. And when they zoom out, actually, you can see it says chat room on the... Oh, wow. And chat room apparently uses a lot of the same symbolism as the Wings era and the universe story. So there's a character that's called Eva. There's Wings. And there's a character that's left at the zoo by his father oh. and takes pills to deal with the emotional outcome. And then after Sugar puts the blindfold on Jimin, we see Jimin sort of trying to move and dancing... Um, contorted but, but the blindfold is sort of tied to the door which is representing the lie of overlooking the truth that he knows about the evil world and how he feels trapped or like caught in the lie mm -hmm. and then Tay seen through a door jumping off the edge of a balcony yeah again I think that foreshadows his role as the fallen angel mm -hmm. so then we have the uh, scene at the dinner table which evokes the confirmation class in Demian, which ends on a lesson about the Last Supper, which sort of pairs the end of your childhood life, symbolized by the confirmation, with learning about the ultimate sinner, which was Judas, obviously leading to the death of Christ. And they all have apples on their plates, representing the first meeting with sin. And then we get Jin's outline on the red background, and he's letting go of a balloon, which I haven't seen anywhere else, but I immediately thought of the Banksy girl with the balloon, often interpreted as symbolizing loss of innocence. Mm. So I was like, wow, this fits as well. Fits. Yeah. <laughs> and then RM raids from Demian. He too was a tempter. He too was a link to the second, the evil world with which I no longer wanted anything to do. In Demian, Sinclair says this about the character Demian, as in he's the one that sort of teaches him about this other dark realm even though he's not responsible for his first meeting with it but in the whole mv you see the sort of young lion guiding the magnet line into the experiences with the evil world like sugar with the blindfold and arm with the absinthe and mm -hmm. with the arrow once they've been exposed to the real world i, I guess in demian at least sinclair tries to run away but it's too late so Jin letting go of the balloon symbolizes the lost innocence that needs to be lost to seek the truth and so he sort of reaches for the balloon but he can't get it back and then the boys run through the door as well if they ran from 
the temptation, but to stay back. Yeah. So you see in Sugar Playing the Organ, it's a piece called Passacaglia in the D minor by Buxtehude, uh, which Pistorius, the organist, actually also does play in Demian. Mm-hmm. And then you see them running through the doorway, like you said. Jin turns back, and then Tate turns back and follows him, puts the hand over his face, and then pulls it away. And then you see the fallen angel statue is right in front of Jin. Oh. Jin walks towards the statue, and interspersed with it, we see images of Tay with the veil being lifted off him and the scars on his back from the wings. Mm-hmm. This is when he's revealed as the fallen angel. Jin kisses the statue, and then Tay turns around, looks at the camera, and smirks. <gasps> yeah. And then all the surroundings sort of turn into chaos. Statues start breaking and get covered in neon paint. Fountains sort of start sprouting. It shows Jin having embraced the good and the evil worlds through the kiss. Because in Demian, there's a scene where Demian and Sinclair have a kiss at the end of the Mm -hmm. book. And that's sort of when he completes his individuation. You see the Nietzsche quote on the wall, which is, one must still have chaos inside oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. It's in German, but it's it's there on the wall. And Nietzsche, actually, I didn't know this before I started looking into this quote, but Nietzsche is the father of this whole theory of seeking the truth outside a conventional, moral, and ethical coded society, oh, actually. Really? Yeah, he was the one that sort of came up with that idea. And to be able to achieve self-actualization in his opinion and contribute something unique to the world, you must not be restricted by the conventional codes of what makes you good or bad, but must strive to reach your destiny regardless. Wow. <laughs> and we learned about Nietzsche as well. <laughs> I thought that BTS would take me to this, but sure. Educated king. Exactly. Oh, we are. We are. <laughs> we are through them. So the statue then starts crying these colorful tears. Jimin removes the blindfold and has the tears as well. Mm. And then they finish the dance and Jin looks in the mirror. And whilst he's looking at the lilies symbolizing purity, his reflection in the mirror stands in darkness and also looks at the flower. But the flower in the reflection is something called the Leatris flower, which is also actually known as a blazing star, which also links to the quote, which the quote is right above the mirror. So the mirror shows the chaos inside, I think. He looks at himself, looks at the flower, and then looks back at himself. And then there's a crack that appears in his face. Mm. And Jin makes this perfect face as if, like, he's he's just seen he's, just he's seen the face of evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he does it really well. I, I've written that Tay and Jin should get all the Academy Awards for this, honestly. Mm. But, yeah, Jin has broken the egg that was his childhood and now pursues the truth. And, yeah, that's the whole in me. Jesus. What do we think? Yeah, I like it. It's um, the outfits are great. Yeah, I guess it is nice that there is an aspect to it where you can look deeper into it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a very nicely presented music video. Yeah, I think when I first saw it, I was like, obviously mesmerized by all the like the pretty of it. It's very mm-hmm. pretty. It's amazing, isn't it? It's really complex and intellectual and it's really well done and there's so many references i think one of the things that we should say is that blood sweat and tears was the first mv you ever showed me and obviously they look amazing in it and it's just like an absolute like overload of it's a, it's a visuals and choreo and just you're just completely overwhelmed by it yeah. and then also you told me that the sets are made mm. so they made that set they didn't walk into a museum and then yeah. update it. They made it as a standalone. And I was just like, this is this price. Yeah. Um, it's the one I've shown everyone. I've shown them to my mom because she was like, let's see one of these videos. And then all of the boys, they all just look completely flawless. Yeah. yeah. And Tay in the, in the blonde hair, I think he deserves a shout out. He, yeah, Tay in the blonde the, hair. The blonde hair with the blue contacts. He looks like a... Someone who would tempt you into sinning. <laughs> well, haven't they all? all yeah, of them. Like, oh, for sure. Junie's got the really low cut V at the back. Jimmy's obviously got the choker, the big red choker around his neck, the low V. Yeah. Um, Hobie's got the similar sugar in the the like military military style yeah. jacket. Just every look in this MB is just yeah. Oh, and Jimmy's shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> And the jacket falls off. And he's like, oh, it was an accident. It was an accident. And everyone's like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, whatever, Jimin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the MV, love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, uh, so yeah, should we talk about performances? Mm-hmm. The first one we linked is the one in the flower jackets, mm. which is um, Countdown. But, yeah, they still look like vampires, essentially. 
Jimin looks otherworldly. He does, yeah. With the grey hair that's like flicked up. And yeah, when the grey jacket. His, I think because the camera's closer than in the MV, like when he reaches out at the start, yeah. I feel like his hand's about to hit my yeah. <laughs> face and I'm like, whoa. And the dance in general obviously is, is super sexy with the covering of the eyes and like the crotch grabbing and everything. <laughs> and uh, he has got the little pussy ball. Yeah. And like I wrote that RM look, looks a bit like a master. <laughs> He does look like a matador with the jacket, yeah, because it's because he's got the high neck. Yeah. Should we talk about the floor choreo? Oh, yeah, yes. Jesus Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, the floor choreo. So, like, there's sections in the chorus where one of them will stand in the middle and then all of them will, like, go down to the floor. I don't think we need to talk about anyone except Jimin and Jungkook. (laughs) They go down to the the floor. Yeah, they do, like, a handstand, but, like, halfway down and then like lower themselves to the ground in this very like alluring yeah <laughs> a fluid motion it's a bone um, in motion yeah <laughs> mental yeah and they do it more than once they're more, they're... and then they do the they're all laid down they do the upward for us yeah like they're like doing like keggles at the gym yeah imagine like what do they call those butt crunches or butt whatever crunch. <laughs> they're all doing butt crunching yeah but like up at the person in the middle so like if i'm, I'm glad yeah you'd die you, you would if you were that person in the middle <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. no, it's too dirty. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the next one we have is the one with the silk trousers. Um, <laughs> it's where Tej and Yoongi and Juni have the silk chokers. Yeah. And then Jimin has the face shirt from his short film. Yeah. The real highlight, obviously, is Hobby and Yoongi in their full silk pajamas. Yeah. Which leave less than normal, I'd say, to the imagination. Mm. Um, <laughs> and we've included the focus fan camps in the uh, episode notes. <laughs> mm. and you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a nice time with this. This is when you became a hobby It's when I right? became a, a hobby wrecker, yes. Yeah. I don't think we need to talk more about that one because it's, it's good for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we have the silk shorts one, which is the um, sexy one. The sexy one, yes. They all have the silk shorts in that one. No, some browsers, of them look more sadly. pajamary. Than yeah, others. they all look a bit like bed, though. <laughs> <I think. laughs> you can wear them to bed. <laughs> they all look like they're ready for bed. Yes. Yeah, Aram's got like bed head. Mm, maybe that's where he was before. Yeah, maybe. And then we get Ooh. the fourth muster. This is a complete pivot in terms of vibes. Um, <laughs> but there's a fourth muster where they do it in animal onesies. <laughs> So Tay's got a chicken outfit and it goes down to the bottom of his knee and then there's like an open bit, which I guess is meant to be your like actual bare chin. And then there's like a little orange bit that you put over your foot to make mm-hmm. it look like a chicken. But he's just got like his really like nice chinos on underneath. So it Ridiculous. just looks very out of place. And then Yungi's a kangaroo, Jin's a flying squirrel, Jimin's a shark, Juni's a pink monkey, I think. He is a monkey. Yeah, I hope he's a crocodile. And I'm not sure about JK's yellow outfit. Wouldn't it be a bunny? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it could be a bunny. A yellow bunny. Yeah, that's probably it. All right. Um, so he's at the most set, and they still do the choreo like quite sexily, but they're laughing a lot. Yeah. Must watch. Yes. And then we've included some of the encores. They won a lot with this song at the music they, shows they, so there's a lot of encores where they'd like pre-show I believe they'd be like if we win this one we'll perform the song barefoot and then people would vote for them and then they'd be like yeah we have to perform it barefoot so there's a barefoot encore they all take their shoes off but RM, yes. Hobie and Tay go fully barefoot and the confetti yeah. sort of sticks to their feet I did really enjoy the feet especially because when they were trying to get confetti off I got to see like every bit of it not just the top yeah I like that you've called the next one after that, RM's Ode to Greenland. <laughs> I've just seen that in the performance now. Did you hear me? <laughs> in this one, the, the thing that they do is they do it laying down, right? Which is yeah. very cute, but really annoying because they don't move the banner. So you literally can barely see them. And but... then at the end, Junie says, thank you to armies all it's over that, the world. It's actually at the beginning. It's oh, like it right the when they announce them as the winner. He says it's quite a bit of stuff in Korean and then he goes like oh no so I just really want to say this to all the armies all over the world like in the Asia, <laughs> Europe, Africa, North South America, Oceania and Greenland. <laughs> Especially like in Greenland. He, he did not want to leave anyone out okay. <laughs> That's just who I am is you know and it's a beautiful thing. He's very inclusive. <laughs> He's adorable. Um, yeah and then the last one we included is from KBS. Where they do the like cute faces yeah they perform it cutely 
There's um, a bit where Sugar's just admiring Herbie for a really long time. Yeah, and then he starts trying to kill him with the trophy. Um, <laughs> and then they all lay on the floor and do the like. Yeah, the best part is when Jimin lies down on the floor and then everyone joins him except JK and RM who like stand over them being like super cool rappers. Pretending to rap. Yeah, and be like, yeah, these are my bitches on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> They're very sweet. They're very yeah. happy in this year. Yep. Overall, Buds and Tears, we're fans. Big fans. Big fans, yeah. Great, brilliant song. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's end it there. Should we do Lost? Yeah, I did Lost. Lost is written by P Dog, Supreme Boy, RM, and others, and was produced by P Dog. It is a vocal line solo. Mm-hmm. And in the V Live, RM said it was his favorite. And then he said that throughout the V Live, like when he talked about Hobie doing a brilliant job on Awake, he mentioned Hobie again up here saying that losing your way is finding your way was written by Hobie and it was just mm-hmm. a brilliant line. Yeah. So, Aram's a big fan. The sort of song sort of centres mm-hmm. around losing your way and if that means finding your way. Well, yeah, it's like, do you need to lose your way to find your way in a way? Like, yeah, is it okay to lose your way? Because that will help you find it. Yeah. yeah, it opens up with, I'm still standing here with my eyes closed, lost between the desert and the ocean, mm. which is obviously a ding, 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 yeah. <laughs> ocean, sea reference. Yes. And it says, I didn't know that there were this many paths and that I could take and paths that I can take. So this sort of awareness that by pursuing one future, you cut off all other futures, right? Yeah. It's quite an angsty side. Like, Mm. I think it falls into the concept that we were talking about, about fame and the risk that that comes with, the things that you lose because of that. Yeah, Um, for sure. What would it mean if I would have just been an office worker or a Mm. tennis player? Is that the right? Yeah path would I have been happier and there's a line that says I still believe even though it's unbelievable to lose your path is to find that path so I put that to sort of resonates with me as a sentiment about making mistakes yeah and also a sentiment about taking risks right Mm -hmm. so you do have to sometimes let go of preconceptions or misconceptions Mm -hmm. about yourself and the things that you want and what you thought the future would look like yeah sort of stuff yeah you didn't say the bit where they go, I never felt this way before. Am I becoming an adult? And I was like, oh, yes. Youth to adulthood reference. Ding, ding. That's done. And then the chorus. Lost my way, constantly pushing without rest within the harsh rainstorms. Lost my way within a complicated world without an exit. And then lost my way. No matter how much I wonder, I want to believe in my path. And then lost my way. Eh, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then found my way, and then they repeat that. So I guess it sort of hits on the lost my way, but then I found my way theme. Hmm. And then the, no matter how much I wonder, I want to believe in my path. So faltering and wandering off, but wanting to stay true to the journey as an idol. Yeah. And then the next sort of verse goes into the, they've got some, but strong, but I'm not sure it's super strong. <laughs> um, they've got some imagery around the ant. Yeah. <laughs> so I once saw an ant going somewhere, constantly crashing and crawling forward find something to eat roaming for days and that sort of refers to how sometimes you can take different routes to still get to the same place yeah they follow Um, up with there's a reason for all this frustration so like they're crashing and crawling forward like the ant but there's a reason like they're trying to get they they say if i believe that we're on the right path if we ever find it we will return home just like an ant Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Uh, and then it ends on this sort of conviction. So even if I'm slow, I'll walk on my own feet. Even if I go back, I will reach this path eventually. I will never lose my dream. Yeah. So back to wanting to push forward and pursue the dream of being an idol. Yeah. And so we have one because they had, like it feels like they have a path, right? But then they're sort of doubting it. I don't know whether it's like, oh, I'm on this path now and I'm so far along the path, but I'm like starting to doubt whether there would have been a different path that would have been equally right for me or whether, whether it's about the like, oh, actually now we've achieved everything we wanted to achieve. Where does the path go from here? Mm. But I guess it could be both. I think it probably is both, right? Around the what do you do now that you've had a certain amount of success? Yeah. What does it mean in my big grand goal of changing the world yeah, and yeah, having yeah. this positive impact on the world? Um, the bit where they go like, oh, I'll never lose my dream, but I'm like, I believe in the path that I'm on and all that sort of stuff. I think it also can link to the like overall theme of the album you know where they brought up all these like dark sides of fame and all that sort of stuff it's kind of like reassuring in a way that they're like despite all these struggles that we're having 
this is still the path that we're choosing. Because at the start of the song, I think they were a bit like, oh, I'm not sure. I never felt this way before. Is this the path for me? But then at the end, they're like, yeah, yeah, I believe this isn't the right path. I'm going to keep on going despite all these like frustrations that I'm having with the concept of like fame and fortune. So, yeah, it has a lot of levels. Just mm. lost. What do you think, Tash? I think I like that it's a vocal line song. Add a bit more to album, even though you've already got a lot of variety. When they perform it, you can definitely tell that they put, like, it's meaningful and they can get in the feels with it. And... Mm. When they sing it, yeah. Because we did the solo swings earlier, yeah. now when I watched it and then when I saw that I remember written it, I was like, this is not good enough. Vocal line should have written this. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling really weird. I'm Perfect. feeling like Aaron felt at the festa dinner, right? Where he's like, I can't keep talking on your behalf. Yeah. But like, you know what, what he talked about when he talked about writing Jungkook's song for yeah. him? He did talk about like, obviously, like, oh, we've had this experience with Jungkook where he like had this breakdown in the hotel room because he only really cares about it. He writes from someone else's perspective. Mm. He's obviously just a much more, and I want to say talented because I think the solo songs that the vocal line did, right? We're good. It's just, mm. he's m- much more of, an experienced and prolific lyricist yeah he can do it a lot quicker right yes yeah. so he, and he like, wrote a lot of this stuff because sugar was working on his mixtape and hobby was working on the intro yeah so he, he said a lot of that come, came his way because of that i don't know it's weird because in most beautiful moment in life part one that we've already done uh Jungi said in the behind the scenes that he did he said like oh it was really exciting for the vocal line members to get involved with the songwriting and they've you know wanted to take part whereas in this album which is a much bigger album mm. they don't get involved beyond the solos mm. which is a bit strange but anyway but overall i think it's good I yeah it's got some good vocals in should we go into the performances yes so there's one m um, countdown one that we picked out tangent have striper shirts <laughs> yeah jimmy and jk are in black which really annoyingly then all of the other dancers are in black yeah why you obviously see that there's choreo with it i put uh, it's tiny choreo it's mm. not very, very small. explosive um, it feels a bit modeling choreo like yeah. they walk and they pose when Jin sings about the ant, there's a bit where all the dancers sit down and then Jin, like, crawls his <laughs> along the dancer's arm to symbolise the ant. Um. Kings of literal choreo. Yeah. At least it's not the worst choreo that's come in. I liked it. What about the dog? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's come in. It's we'll coming. hear about the dog it's choreo. Yeah, in it's just literal. It's, uh, it's it, ridiculous. It has got nothing on, if I <laughs> on the, the car. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a low bar. Um, <laughs> I think the like at a concert when there'll be one person performing and the rest of them are gonna go get changed, go rest, do whatever. It's just a filler for the comeback as a whole. Yeah, yeah, I agreed. And then there's one from the Wings tour in Newark where they have these red outfits on. It's definitely like a fan cam. It says in front row. And I think she's definitely a JK fan. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She follows um, JK the whole way around. Yeah. <laughs> I put, I want Jimmy's distress jumper with the zippers. That mm. one's really nice. But then there's the bit where JK sits down and then he waves at the camera and you die. Yeah. 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 She died then. <laughs> she, she died. Would you die, Tash? Obviously. <laughs> Okay. Anything else we want to say about the red outfits? They're quite cool. I like you. Yeah. Right. Let's do the cipher. Woohoo! I'm excited. Should we do an abridged version of the cipher? Or is that not possible? No. (laughs) We must have all the hatred. Um. Yeah. The cipher was written by C. Tricky Stewart and J. Pierre Medor, um, and then R. M. J. Hope and Sugar. And it was produced by C. Tricky Stewart and J. Pierre Medor as well. RM opens this one and he's sort of mimicking the criticism that they get where he shouts, name, name. And then he responds with, sorry, Bay. And this really is like the the peak of the Bay era, mm. I think. Um, Bay is big. And then he goes, pronunciation, pronunciation, sorry, Bay. And then diction, 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 sorry, Bay. Oh, face, not an idol, sorry, Bay. And he continues to sort of apologize for more ridiculous things as he goes on. So he goes, because I'm breathing, because I'm too healthy, because I'm bang time, I'm sorry, bae. Oh. And according to the lyrics that I read, which were from Dual Set, he's adopted this phrase that they have, Moon Sung Hamnida, which is like, I'm sorry for being an arts major, mm. which they use like when they're like, oh, I'm, I wouldn't understand that because I'm a liberal arts major. It's like a combination of the word for liberal arts, which is mungwa, 
Whereas Choose Sir Hamnida means sorry. But he made a bang Sir Hamnida, which is like, sorry, I'm back time. Smart boy. Yeah. And then he shouts, Erthen, Erthen, Erthen. Sorry, sorry bae. bae. Yeah. <laughs> so he's sort of accepting that he's being attacked for all these things that he literally can't do anything about or like doesn't want to do anything about. And he's not trying to like bite back at the haters anymore. He just kind of accepts it. And sorry. They'll say what they want. Basically. Hate is going to hate. Hate is going to hate. Exactly. Play is going to play. Yeah. So then he says, the sound I'm making now, why don't you change your pattern of talking shit about others, bae? <gasps> it's about to get boring, boring, bae. I'm not here full of you anymore. Sorry, bae. I'll be the drum. Just hit me hard. Let's just try it. Samuel Nori Bay, which is Samuel Nori is a type of Korean traditional drumming piece of music, basically. Nice. And because you make drumming music by hitting the drum, he's saying that his haters can like keep hitting him and hate on him all they want, but he'll just keep making music. He'll be the drum. And then he goes, I'm a monster. My tail is long, Bay. You'll shoot me anyway, Bay. You <laughs> hate me, but you know me. I like hate comments more than no comments. I don't know you, but you know my name. Nice. Mic drop. <laughs> And then the chorus comes in in English, which we all know which where, I love, where, where it goes. I love, I love, I love, I love myself. And then they do that twice. And then they go, I know, I know, I know myself. Yeah, play a hater. You should love yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite of the song because we've done so far. Yeah. Well, we've only done the show first one. <laughs> <laughs> and the circle room one. Yeah. <laughs> Two. Yeah. So it obviously can't contrasts to reflection where he says he wishes he could love himself but it's sort of a helpful response to the haters that you can't drive me down because I, I love myself if it sort of fits into the whole good versus evil theme of the album of accepting both feelings like sometimes you hate yourself and then sometimes you love yourself I think it's a complicated thing so I think in this instance he's saying whatever the haters bring I love myself I'm happy with what I've got and I'm not going to be dragged down by hate but then on a flip of that he has the inner turmoil about what it means to be him. Yeah. And those are very different. So he can be unsure of himself and how to love himself truly. Mm. But that's not because of the haters. Right. That's yeah. because of his inner, inner his inner demons, turmoil and his yeah. need to connect things and find himself. Whereas right. when I'm facing off to adversity yeah. from an external force, I know within myself that I'm doing the right thing and I love myself in that instant. Yeah, that's a, a good explanation as well. So then next is Hobie's verse. So he goes, I want to get sleep time without a chance to rest. We're receiving spotlight. Are oh, you want to be my life? Mm. Those who are starved should just take my bullets. I take you to the stage covered in my style, all innocent. Wow. Um, and brilliant. according to the um, Dorset lyrics, he uses this term, Yonheng, which you'd only really use about like a police officer taking someone to the station. So mm. like, it's like a, I'll imprison you on the stage. Well, it is an imprisonment, right? He wants to sleep. He doesn't have time to rest. Yeah. I don't think you could cope. It you is a prison. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. He talks about his ambition and the haters again. And he says, but I can't be satisfied just being here. I'm climbing up there. Hi, hi, hi. I take on the road no matter what. If you're not able to put an end to it, there's no possibility of pronouncing failure. I love my rule, the work that I do with my bros. <laughs> nice. He loves his bros. <laughs> he does. And there yeah. If you can't do it yourself, then you, you're no, no one to criticize, basically. And then he says, players in a league of their own, I'll become the supervisor above them. I'll draw a bigger picture for the rest of your life. Continue shouting from where you are. And nice. then he goes, dream come true. Honor and wealth isn't that. You all eventually kiss the bottom of my feet. So, yeah. Nice. Throwing all the shade. And then he goes, I'm a cat. You're all mice. I select them and torture them like cows. Oh, cows. Wow. Yeah. Cows are my friends. Yeah. Oh, be. And such it, a fully fond person. He really is. Yeah. He knows what he likes. Me and cows. Yeah. And then he goes, I'll high five my bricks in my house that I'll move into next year. Um, <laughs> sure. But the bricks is short for bear brick, which is essentially the bear toys apparently are like just those bears they like, come in plain white and mm -hmm. then they do collaborations with artists that like deck them out in their own designs so there's loads of these bear dolls some of them have the ex cows mm -hmm. eyes but some of them don't and then he goes open your eyes and see my ambition bring your ear to me and listen to my words that i'll say for the first and last time the chorus comes again and then we've got sugar slowly worse which i'm very excited about so he there's a surprising amount of english in this verse i didn't okay. realize before i read it but he says back back to the basic microphone check call me Pepsi or a nice. badass if anyone doesn't know i don't think there will be anyone who doesn't but 
it refers back to their song Silver Spoon or Bepse, which we've not done yet, but a Bepse is essentially a crow tit. And there's an idiom in Korean saying the crow tit will break its legs trying to walk like a stork. Mm -hmm. As in, if you don't have any privilege, you should just know your place. And it's been linked with BTS, obviously, because they're from a small company. Obviously, they have massively outgrown their Mm -hmm. privilege. In this rap game, I'm the generous one to rehabilitate the man who began to slack is my first plan. Hashtag suck a better run and gang gang on Instagram. Nice. (laughs) But he says it in like quite a silly voice. So he's like making fun of these gangs on Instagram, I think. And then he says, that's their life. My life is just day by day, payday, paycheck, Rolex on my wrist. Click, clack to the bang, bang, click, clack to the pow. I'm so high. What are you even looking at? Even if you do a run up, I'm too high to be touched by your hand. So it's a basketball reference where he's like, they're trying to touch the bottom of the net, but they can't. And then he says, the difference is pretty big. You can't see it. I'm going to destroy the blind love for the shitty car you are. And apparently there's an expression in Korean that says when a shitty car leaves a Benz arrives and then he says play you all and fly over your dead face wow. and those lines apparently were modified by KBS when they do their performance on KBS he had to say something else because it was, it was inappropriate and then he says click clack to the bang F you you and you I'm always thankful for not earning anything so easily why is it my fault that your life is mediocre? Just keep living like that, just moderately. I'm sorry, but I'll earn more going forward. So watch me and be healthy, please. Oh, yeah. nice. So yeah, I'm really angry about the haters, but they sort of learned to accept them. I think that's the gist of it. I mean, that is the gist, yeah. yeah. I think it brings their different aspects as well, right? Like Aaron with the apologising for his success, but not really meaning it. I will be saying, you know, this ambition requires a lot of hard work. Do you want it? And then Sugar sort of bringing in the, well, I've worked really hard for it. You can look up at me from there. Mm. Even though it's all along the same theme, they also bring their aspects of success. Um, and it's just, it's, the cypher's an absolute banger. It really is. It's really good. It's a good bad bitch anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Really good. So there are a few performances of this because I couldn't choose. Well, I included the link for the one in KBS and the big jackets where Sugar's first was edited just because we talked about it. Arms wearing this like weird PVC jacket. That's quite strange, but I guess they're meant to look hip hop and they're clearly about to do an, another number in suits just after because they're all wearing these like massive jackets. Over that jackets. Cover. Um, he kind of looks great in plastic. Yeah, yeah, no, he does. <laughs> but I wouldn't be like, right, let me get a hip hop jacket and be like, yes, this one. <laughs> this plastic one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're happy in the cypher. Oh, they're, for sure. They're at ease. They're just like vibing. Obviously, this vibing. doesn't have any No choreo out. needed. Yeah. No performance needed. Just. So whatever the fuck you want and yeah sticking it to them then we've got the one on the wings tour they're all wearing these like velvet jackets this blue one and arms bomber's massive but his, i really so like fat. his pink hair with the glasses mm. i think it looks really good pink one's good too and when he performs it he does this weird thing where it's like when he does the oh face not an idol and then he goes just like a little like egg yo thing oh. and he looks so unimpressed when he says that he's like uh, face not an idol whatever sorry babe and then he smiles for like an inch and then just drops his face back to normal yeah he's like sub it's that mesmerizing. and then hope he's in a vest yeah he is i hope he's got this long robe like a and leather pants robe and leather pants i thought it was also cool in the, in the performances like how much they like back each other up it's exactly what i was gonna say yeah they like hype each other up for the whole thing yeah. whereas like Aaron will do his bit and sugar will go like oh say what and, like, yeah. yeah do um, like a hype but then they also like because obviously Jungi's rap is really quick mm. i think he typically takes like a break when where he says the bit about rolex on my wrist and then Aaron says that for him mm. when they perform it nice yeah um, and he just looks at his wrist being like, yeah, that's a Rolex. <laughs> yeah, and they do tend to, like, look at each other with a fair amount of adoration when the other one's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can see Herbie, like, looking over Sugar's, like, shoulder, like, yeah, man, get it, get it. When Sugar starts as well, they're always like, because it's right at the end of the second chorus, and everyone's like, yeah, okay, Sugar, there you go. <laughs> and then the next performance that we chose was the M Countdown one. I, I only really picked this one because... Sugar wears this outfit, right? And it's like a long brown robe thing. But he's got this like bandana and a bucket hat. So you can't see his eyes at all. But he just looks like a real, like what I picture a Korean gangster would look like. And I'm into it. So (laughs) I had to have it. Oh, but he's got the bandana down the back, like it's hair. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's nice. Mm, (laughs) It's something. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this performance is really energetic. Like, you see the crowd, like, for a music show, 
Mm. The crowd is so into it. So hard. And yeah. like the all the like bouncing around, the lights and everything. Like I thought this had energy on a different mm. level than the first one. And I am in a vest. Yeah. His and Mummy's outfit is nice as well. Like it's like a green hoodie. I think Sugar's outfit reminds me of the there's a Jimin photo shoot, isn't there, where Jimin wears the bandana down the back. Oh, and he pokes his tongue out and he looks at the Rolex. <laughs> yes. Right, we're done. <laughs> we're moving on. You linked the medley as well. I did, yes. The medley is a good one. Sparkly jackets galore. Hobby has the bucket hat this time. It's a cipher medley, so they do one verse from each cipher and then all of the fourth one. So mm. Hobie does his verse from the cipher part one, which he actually also did at Hobie Palooza. Mm. Yeah. And then Sugar does the verse from part two, and RM does his verse from part three with Supreme Boy. And Supreme Boy is like on the decks behind on them. The deck, yeah. Yeah. I just wrote that I would have killed to be there for this. I really I just. Medley, yeah. Uh, oh, maybe, you'll get, maybe you'll get a cipher medley in Busan. No. <laughs> Thoughts on the cipher, Natasha? Love it. The outfits that they were wearing in the performances kind of reminded me of like a Korean music show called Show Me The Money, which is like competing for that. You have loads of rappers and someone that wore on it, I don't know if you were like a judge or like that, is Tablo, which is someone from Epikai. And obviously we Ooh. all know the link between PTS and Epikai. Yeah. High praise from a rap line solo from I know, Natasha. I know, I was expecting you to be like, I hate it. <laughs> no, I really do love it. I hope it gets played at the boat party because it'll be, it'll be really good. Yeah, yeah, really good. It's the chorus that makes it though, right? Well, no. the rap, the rap's brilliant, but I think the beat and the rap. I think the chorus is because RM said in his um, "Be Loved" and he, yeah, he wrote that "I love, I love myself," and he was like, "Oh, I really wish I could come up with something like smarter, something better." But then, yeah, he said um, I wrote it, the chorus, but I thought it wasn't good enough, so I left it. Sugar wrote something that means, "What do you think?" Which is on D two. I he like did. the cipher. I think the rap line should cipher more. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Highlight. Yes. Right. The next song we're going to do is Am I Wrong? It's written by RM Supreme Boy, Geiko, P Dog, Adora. And then it was produced by Sam Klempner, James Reynolds, and Josh Wilkinson. And they also all have writing credits on the song. Mm hmm. The first bit that you hear is this sampled bit by Keb Merle, which goes, am I wrong? Falling in love with you. Tell me, am I wrong? While your other man was out there cheating and lying and stepping all over you. And then RM's bit starts off and he goes, the world's gone crazy. It's Hobie, isn't it? Hobie. That goes, how about you? And then RM goes, you think it's, it's okay? okay? And Sugar goes, I don't think it's okay. And then he talks about having eyes and ears but don't listen or see and then he goes fish live in all our hearts and its name is selfish oh no nice. selfish selfish and i tried to look up whether this is a saying or a reference or in something but it doesn't seem like it is it's just a play on fish and selfish and then sugar spit comes in and he's got more animal metaphors he says we're all dogs pigs become dogs because we're angry stork versus crotet boring air day and that's another reference to Bepstein, but the dogs and pigs comment is a reference to a comment that was made in the summer of 2016. So only about like three, four months before this came out by Na Yang Wook, who was the head of the Education Ministry's Policy Bureau at the time. And he was out for drinks with some reporters. And he said, among other things, that 99 percent of South Koreans have no ability to move up in the world and can be treated like pigs and dogs, <gasps> simply fed and kept alive. Jesus. Yeah, really bad. That was the education secretary. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> really bad, really bad. I found this on LA Times. They, they did a write-up of it, and their remarks seemed particularly harsh because this guy was responsible for overseeing the policy at the education ministry, obviously, like you said, and education is the thing that many South Koreans look to in order to improve their social mobility. And then they found a 2016 survey that said that uh, the percentage of respondents who felt that it was possible to move up on the social ladder through their own effort fell from 37% in 2009 to 22% in 2015. Wow. And RM also references this in Persona. He says, I'm not sure if I'm a dog or a pig. Oh, nice. It comes up later. Mm -hmm. And then Hobie goes, that's right, we're all crazy. All right, now give a shout. Mayday, mayday. D and JK do the pre-chorus and it goes, it seems the entire world's gone crazy. It seems like the end. Oh, why? Oh, why? 
and then the chorus goes, am I wrong? Did I say something wrong? Did I lie going crazy? Am I wrong? Where am I going? This world's crazy. <laughs> and that's a, an abridged version because they do repeat themselves a lot. And then the hook goes, are you ready for this? Uh, that's by RM. And then Hobie goes, no, I'm not. Mm. Um, Hobie's next verse goes, that's right, kid. You've gone crazy. That you're not right in this crazy world is crazy. The earth, sky, and all around, hell yeah, online, offline, hell yeah. And then Aram talks about what we see on the news, and he goes, if that comment and that hatred is nothing to you, you're not normal, you're abnormal. Oh, wow. Yep. So, like, he wants people to be impacted by, or yeah. feels like he lives in a world where people if just... you're not impacted by negativity, then you're abnormal. Uh, well, I sort of got it as, like, a if you see stuff on the news and you read comments online and that doesn't make you feel anything, mm. then you're abnormal. Okay a bit like oh whatever like this shit happens sort of thing then um, you're part of the problem yeah and then the bridge goes though i walk this crazy world's path i still want to live longer i want to find it my faith so it's another one where they talk about like political circumstances in their own country it sort of follows up from Pepsi and dope mm. i think that's direct quote from rm <laughs> am i wrong in the vein of dope and Pepsi. <laughs> James sent them the sampling from overseas and Bang Pity took the sampling. He said something like, I some, uh, often think about that, like, if I feel that way, am I the only one? And does that make me weird sort of thing? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess that they're not necessarily getting at, like, one issue here, but sort of just being that critical of society in general. Like, sometimes when you listen to the news or you watch, like, those, like, news commentary shows, like, and you just can end up feeling a bit overwhelmed by, like, all of these, like, issues mm. that are just sort of right, this is going to impact me in some way. This is like a massive issue. I can't believe that this is how things work. Why are we not just like spending all of our energy trying to solve this issue? Mm. (laughs) Currently, we have the obviously climate change and the debt crisis and all that sort of stuff. The cost of living crisis. cost of living and oil and all that sort of stuff. And there isn't like a clear way out. So they have different problems in Korea, but it's it's easy to like sympathize with this view of just like the world's just crazy. (laughs) I think also obviously them getting at this dogs and pigs quo is like when you realize that all the the people in charge have no idea corrupt, either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or don't care. Or right? don't care don't or care. don't have a plan or like you don't believe in them to have a plan that would make sense for you. I guess it links to Parasite. I was watching that other day again. And obviously that's from South Korea, so it's showing issues that go on in South Korea, but like obviously we don't hear about stuff like that. Like we probably would have never heard about that politician saying that type of thing. But Do you want to tell us quickly what Parasite's about? Just because I'm not seeing it. What sort of issues do they bring up? Like if it's a, the same vein as the song? It's like um, an imbalance between the rich and the poor. And there's a scene in it that's like really stands out, which is also linked to what happened recently with the like worst rain that Korea's ever had in 80 years. What happened in the scene, there were a lot of heavy rainfall and the rich family that's there came back and were like, oh, look at all the skies. It's so like clear. All the pollution's gone. Like It's so nice that it's rained. I'm glad that it's rained. But then on the other side, it were like the people that lived in the semi-basements, which a few people died a few weeks ago from being trapped in them. Their whole world's been turned upside down just for the fact that a bit of rain. Yeah just like different perspectives and it sort of helps you put things into perspective as well Uh, it reminds me of this really sort of harrowing conversation that i had when we were in nigeria and that was around how we'll never get a solution for malaria because rich people can easily put up mosquito nets and protect their houses but because it only affects poor people you're never going to have like legislative money behind it even though it's the number one Mm. killer in the area because rich people can protect themselves from it so obviously we're not going to invest in that and I was like oh, wow. what, what this is That's crazy, crazy yeah. like the disparity between mm. rich and poor and actually you've got people in positions of power who are wealthy but they're only seeing it from their perspective and that's the harsh mm. reality of capitalism and of the world right people in power were letting people die from this disease by not putting money into it yeah so I can see why BTS think it's crazy it's, it's crazy, crazy. But yeah, there just seems to be like a lot of issues that we just need to fix for society to be able to go on. And I'm not sure there's a lot of like mm. planning that's been done. But um, you thought about a career in politics? No, not really. 
but that's another that's another issue right like i don't you don't, don't feel really like ne- necessarily it's an accessible career no not no not even like the prospect of being a politician isn't attractive enough to attract the best and the brightest they all want to be investment bankers and like consultants mm-hmm. they don't want to be prime minister because it comes with all of this media scrutiny and like the pay isn't anywhere near like what you'd get as a partner in like a big firm, firm exactly well and then the challenges around even getting elected cost a lot of money right yeah exactly um, so you're en- ending up with like people from money who aren't the most educated no <laughs> or like ne- not necessarily at least yeah i think yeah. that really feeds into how i feel about our political situation actually it's just full of rich morons yeah now that we've spoken about this song, I don't know if the choreo completely undermines it. <laughs> yeah. Because the choreo is really dumb. <laughs> really dumb, yeah. The choreo is like the silliest effing thing that we've seen out of this era. <laughs> like, I guess, it is, I guess it's one of those, how do you speak up about a political issue but still get onto Korean TV? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you dance around like a... Yeah, like a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine I think like... it fit better as like an angry rat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> imagine like RM and Yungi and Hobie and all the people who wrote on this song being like, yeah, and then we're going to make this point of about the, the education minister guy and like how stupid his comments were but like we're gonna do it while we like pretend to be dogs so yeah we so picked the performances out, we picked out a few most of these had them in some sort of colorful suit blazer combo mm-hmm. so really we just picked the ones that we thought had the best outfits um, <laughs> but the choreo for this is yeah like you got it quite crazy um, frivolous when she does this bit about dogs and pigs they pretend to be dogs and lift their legs out like as if they're peeing and then there's some cute moves at the chorus where they do the like arms and legs to all the sides when Jimin goes crazy yeah I really liked arms big green suit and the second one I liked Jin's just a yes shirt yeah me too very much this album is like now this song has this jacket yeah. <laughs> like the cypher has the big powder jacket this song has the blazers Blood, Sweat and Tears has the like flowery the blazers, the Baroque style. And then we're going to get to 21st Century Girls and that's got the black bombers and the... <laughs> we'll have our black skinny jeans and then like different jackets. <laughs> Done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, it is fun. It like, is if fun. it wasn't such a political song, yeah. then it would be good, fun, typical BTS choreo. It's crazy. Yeah. Before knowing actual lyrics, I didn't think there were anything wrong with choreo i used to like the choreo <laughs> but now you've just like just ruined it for me <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean to ruin it it is cute it just doesn't really match with the song the sentiment of the song at least it matches some of the words in the song <laughs> maybe they're dancing crazy maybe because the world's gone crazy <laughs> yeah. and therefore they want to do crazy choreo to really show how crazy it is they're smiling too much though to be angry yeah all right are we happy with am i wrong we are uh, Happy with my wrong. Yeah, 21st Century Girl. Yes, that is mine. It's written by P Dog, Hitman Bang, RM, Supreme Boy, and produced by P Dog. So, 21st Century Girl is an attempt to cut through self esteem and self worth issues plaguing many young females and seek to rectify societal pressures in girls in South Korea to pretty themselves via plastic surgery and extensive makeup or even alter their persona. And the first lyric is by RM and he says, You worth it, you perfect. Deserve it, just work it. You look elegant, you're also pretty. You shine, shine, you're the truth and the reason. What a sweet boy. <laughs> J Hope does the next line and he says, If anyone keeps insulting you, tell them you're my lady. Go tell them. Whatever other people say, you're the best just the way you are. Aww. Aww. So obviously, it's like if someone's insulting you, tell them that this big superstar loves me. So like, if you don't love me, you can go fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally go fuck on with that bitch. Yeah. So Jungkook does the bit right before the chorus where he says, don't ever be scared, whatever people tell you you're strong, you say yes or no, yes or no. And then there's the chorus. Um, which is, to the 20th century girls, live your life, come on baby. To the 21st century girls, you don't mind that new lady. I don't know what, what is a 20th century girl? I wasn't sure about this either, whether they're like, 
the 20th and 21st century girls yeah both of you or whether they're like 20th century girls you like do your thing and I think it's about they go on about like generations and hating on generations right so I think the 20th century girls are probably the older generation who would like for the 21st century girls to live in a certain way whereas the 21st century girls are like girls their own age who've grown up in the 21st century that's my take anyway yeah it's like um if you were to wear an outfit that shows a bit of your belly a lot of people would be like don't wear that you've, you're naked like, you know maybe in that way to a girl don't listen to like older people because that was that t- their time yeah. this is your time you do what you want you change it up and they'll love you for it yeah and I think it's like you know different eras have different like beauty ideals as well mm-hmm. like the beauty standards is like small face golden ratio between like how much of a right angle there is to your neck to your shoulders if you can see your shoulder blade or not and then also to have like a a thin nose and a high nose bridge like double eyelids but also be stick thin but have a a little bit of a curve on your hip Mm. there's a lot of youtube videos that'll like compare idols and say like this is the perfect beauty standard in Korea. This is not the perfect beauty standard in Korea. And that's why they're more loved. Jesus Christ, that sounds really toxic. <laughs> Don't be watching those. Um, I think, yeah, they're, I guess they're trying to get up. You, you, you don't need that, right? Which is the bit that they get onto, like in the next bit of the chorus where they go, tell them you're strong, tell them you're enough, let you go, let you go, let it go. And then they go into the chorus where they say, oh, my ladies, put your hands up. 21st century girls, put your hands up. Now scream. There's like a bit where Juni and Yungi have the, I put an MG back and forth. <laughs> uh, so Arm goes, you're passing by. And the guys say, and then she goes, oh yeah, who's that girl? Who is she? And then Arm says, they lose their mind. And the girls say, and Sugar goes, wait, who's that girl? Who is she? And he does it in this like really high pitched voice and like shouts out. And then Sugar goes, oh, bae. Bay again. Never lower yourself. Okay, don't change yourself to fit in with them. You're mine. You're beautiful enough. Don't worry, baby. You're beautiful. You, you, you. So then the bridge goes, Jungkook goes, everybody want to love you. Everybody going to love you. Don't worry about anything else. Everybody going to love you, Bay. You deserve to be loved. And then they do the chorus again twice. So 21st Century Girl, I've heard, was written as a response to the criticism that they got for some of their early misogynistic lyrics. Mm-hmm. Especially, I think this one was meant to respond to War of Hormone, which is one that we also haven't done yet, but it was seen as objectifying women by only focusing on their physical qualities. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not overly explicit or anything like that. It's like, oh, yeah, girls are so pretty in heels and their bellies are make me crazy. It's not like... Yeah, give me the boobs and the ass. Like, <laughs> that's not I want. <laughs> it's not like a Western rapper song. Like, like look yeah. at all my hoes. <laughs> sort of thing. So it's like on the scale of misogynistic lyrics in music, I don't think is actually that bad, but it's, yeah. So obviously it's meant to be like empowering and encouraging girls not to doubt themselves. Obviously it has that sort of deeper meaning of there being a lot of these like weird beauty standards in Korea and uh I think there's some parts that lend itself to like the fangirling, like when you feel like no one in your life understands you. It's okay because BTS like are there and they understand you and they appreciate you and they like see your worth in that way. And I think that's why it's effective. But at the same time, obviously, if it spreads that positive, positive message. message, yeah, then it, there's not, I don't think there's any like harm to it really. Because yeah, it can be really reassuring and it also sort of links to the concept of like love yourself through the Jungian theory because he, they also did make out the bit where they said at the start you need to love yourself through others mm. and if you're able to be look back to the song and be like well BTS have told me I'm worthwhile and beautiful and whatever and that I don't need all this hate from boys in my class or whatever mm-hmm. then that can only be an empowering thing hopefully. Everyone deserves positive messaging yeah no matter where you get that from and the fact that they're taking that stance and wanting to put out those messages is really great i read a review of the billy eilish tour that we went to see the guy that wrote it compared what he'd seen at billy eilish all the screaming and to like what you'd see from boy bands and he called that an idealized romantic partner yeah 
and he'd likened the atmosphere there and the hysteria there to what you get yeah. like that. And I think that comes down to the way that she spreads her message, right? doesn't have to be an idealised, romanticised no. partnership for it just to someone... feel like a valid relationship between fan and artist yeah. and it to feel like a genuine one Connection, that yeah. resonates, yeah. It's just someone who understands you, right? Like, it's mm. not necessarily a romantic partner, but, like, he, she obviously explores a lot of, like, quite dark themes concepts, and yeah. concepts in her songs and people who relate to that and, you know, people who don't relate to that even can find that there's a person who's been able to articulate how I've been feeling or how they've been feeling in this light and I want to support them and, and say that I've felt seen by them and I mm. think that's what this song is getting at as well, really. Even though it's quite a romantic song, it's yeah. not very romantic. No. But it's got a high beat, it's poppy. Definitely more, like we said, a bad bitch song, one that you can jump around to. Yeah. But we should talk about the performances and the absolute joy that 21st Century Girl gave us. Yes. So the first one we picked out was one called TVPP. Instead of blazers, I've put in this one, they wear bomber jackets and letterman jackets. Tay's white one with the cap is a highlight. I think he, he shines in this performance overall, mm. to be honest. Because he looks confused. He looks so confused. <laughs> the choreo is quite silly. Like, there's a bit at the end where they do this, like, weird train thing. thing. Really not. Yeah. And it's full of the cute moments. Like, when Tay does, oh, my ladies. And then he, like, acts as if he's, he's like, throwing something up in the air. Yeah. And then when it lands, he's got, like, the world's most confused face. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, where the fuck did that came from? <laughs> and then when um, Sugar, like, runs through from the back. When he does his All My Ladies, they sort of throw him forward. Yeah, I guess because he's like back on the stage and then he, all of a sudden he like takes a jump and they like push him <laughs> all the way across the stage. And then Jim um, does the like elbow leaning onto the boys yeah, while they're doing the weird way. Yeah, that's weird. When they all like turn their backs and then Jim's like leaning on them and then arm pops out. Very strange. It's also a bit when like right before they do the train, I think they all like hold each other's backs and then they all do like a face, like a cute face. Mm. And like, oh, they all like pop round, don't they? Yeah. Like turn round. Yeah. Um, so we picked the one from Show Champion. I think you were particularly keen on Arms Yellow Jumper. He looks handsome. He does. And Sugar's got a two tone yeah. bummer jacket, which I'm really keen on. Uh, yeah. When we were... Anything two tone, I'm like, yes. <laughs> what do you think um, of the two performances, Tash? They're very interactive. If you were sat there watching them, you'd be like, yeah, you know, joining in with, with your army bomb. I put I like Jungi's part where we like like the high pitched bit and he comes out and he's like oh. I always think he looks cute in that bit. He does, he looks so cute, doesn't he? Oh. But maybe not as quite as cute as someone who's a factor. <laughs> not as quite as cute as the Bang Tang Bomb for twenty first century girl, the dance practice, Halloween version, where no one of all eye listeners, Jimin is dressed as a pack Troy. All the boys have outfits on. JK is a bunny. Jimin's a pack chai. Aram's a bumblebee. <laughs> no, Aram's a, a yellow bear. Aram's Ar- Ar- got like wings. A, oh, maybe he's a bumblebee then. Um, no, he's, um, do you know, is it called Ryan? It's like a character. So there we, that's Cacao. And there we line for their BT21 stuff. So that's like a Ryan costume. Obviously, they put all characters in like a, in a fairy costume, in pyjamas, in a bunny costume and stuff like that. It's... His favourite character from, like, the emoji things. Right. And then Jin's got the horse. He's got a horse attached mm. to him. Oh, God, Sugar's yeah. in the handbook. Tay's a sailor. Hobie is a skeleton. But the highlight is that Jimin is a pack joy. <laughs> and you literally, it's about 42, 45 seconds in mm. before you see Jimin's face <laughs> because the costume is so high and so big, you can't even see him. Yeah, there's a, a particular highlight when he... Because he's got, like, his arms out, but it's kind of like a T-Rex, so his arms are too short, and then he loses his little, like, Pak head. He loses his and hat. Then he, and then he picks it up, and then he can't put it back on his head because his arms are too short. <laughs> yeah. I found out what V is. It says V is dressed as a card captor Sakura character, not a sailor. Oh. Thank you. It's just the most fun. They're being really silly. Jin's hitting everyone with the horse. They kick JK a few times, but mainly Jimmy's a pack joy. Yeah. JK taps his belly a few times as well. He's got and this big bunny belly. On the comments of that video, I think first comment is four years after, and I'm still wondering why JK is not in an outfit. He's <laughs> <laughs> got 23k likes. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to do it, actually. That's what that is. Yeah, this was a real gift from the podcast. Mm-hmm. My life would have been less fulfilled uh-huh. without seeing Jim and Spectre. Jim and Spectre. Yeah. Two, three. Two, three. That's me. Two, three. Two, two three. So, Two Free was written by Slow Rabbit, P Dog, Hitman Bang, RM, J Hope, Sugar. It was produced by Slow Rabbit and P Dog. Two Free is an, is an army song. They're telling Army to forget about their worries, their struggles, and sadness, and to count to free. RM referenced in the V Live the fact that they introduced themselves. One, two, three, bang, ten. Yeah, that's obviously um, what they're getting at. That's... Well, no, he also referenced that in any sort of psychiatric hypnosis, they go one, two, three, and now you're under. He said, yep. but what matters and keeps us going is hope for a better day. Yeah, and this Korean subtitle for the song is still wishing for good, more good days. Okay, so Aram opens up in English with, I've been trying to tell you this, I was supposed to tell you this, this is all for you. And then it's his verse, which is, let's only walk on flower trails. I can't say that. Let's only see good things. I can't say that either. Saying there will only be good from now on. I can't say that. I can't lie like that. So that's really around that sort of honest evoking of what life's like. So then it goes into Sugar's verse, which sort of opens with a bit of a quote, which is, because you're all idols, it sucks even if I don't hear it. I don't like your lyrics. I can already imagine the performance because you don't have the power. You would certainly have done dirty deeds in the past. Observing how you act, you'll cease to exist. So he's sort of saying that as a quote from someone, that someone said that to him. Mm -hmm. And then he replies to that with, thank you so much. Because of your inferiority complex, I was able to prove myself something that he wasn't able to do in high school. Um, hands clapping, yes, keep on going. We'll be happy by ourselves. Yeah, I'm good. And the dirty deeds, apparently, according to the lyrics that I read, was referring to the rumour that they'd been buying all their own albums to inflate their chart position in the past. And then the chorus comes in, which starts with JK. He said, it's OK, come on. When I say one, two, three, forget it. Erase all sad memories, all my hand and smile, which, as you said, is the reference to both their intro and the hypnosis. Every time you turn on one of those videos, you can forget about your worries. It's a sort of place to escape, right? It's got early magic shop vibes, yeah. early zero o'clock vibes. And then the chorus is quite simple. Hoping for more good days. If you believe me, then one, two, three. Hoping for a better day because we are together. And then Hobie comes in with Hobie's verse, which is always is a little bit sad. He says, me, a shadow behind the stage, me in the depths of darkness. I didn't want to show everything, including my pain. I just wanted to make you smile. I wanted to do good. Thank you for believing in me, for dealing with these tears and wounds. So thanks for becoming my light, for becoming the flower in my most beautiful moment in life. Uh, Beautiful. beautiful. Gorgeous lyrics. It really reminded me of, again, we saw Break the Silence the other day. And, you know, when Jin does his, like, solo trip and he says, like, actually, like, at the start, we didn't really want to show any time that we were sad because we thought, like, the fans use us to be happy. And then when we're sad, the fans are sad with us Mm -hmm. and we don't want to make the fans sad. So we would never really show us our sad sides. But, yeah, there's another, is it an after her when he talks about the shadow behind the stage? Yeah, you can go back to after her for my monologue about Hobie being able to be unhappy and let us love him in his unhappiness. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's about. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine, because now Hobie is sad and angry, and Showing we still love him. Inside, yeah, exactly. Well, what we do. <laughs> some of us still love him. Yeah. There's the bridge, which is, if you believe, then one, two, three, which I think is really nice. I can see the crowd going along with that. And yeah. Big. It's like a call and response, and then the rough lines sort of take turns saying it and responding to each other. And then it's just got the outro, which is smile holding each other's hands, hoping for more good days. Yeah. Um, it's really it becomes beautiful. like a chant at the end. Isn't yeah. It? With like loads of voices. It sort of gives you that vibe of being at the concert, being like, oh, yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, it's all good. So. Yeah. The Wings album, like you said, at times the disjointedness feels formulaic, um, as in we need to write a political song, we need to write an army song, mm. we need to write a... If anything, it is very well done to be yeah. performed. Mm. So I think there's real value in that, that they were 
looking for tracks that would make filling yeah. stadiums this really iconic yeah. moment for people. And I think it's it. there are links to all of this, like, coming of age and hard times and hard choosing your own path and all that sort of stuff. I, I think you can make connections to the overall themes with all of these songs. It's just that some of it, it's like, that's not the point of the song. So sitting here being like, oh, this is like Demian because like X, Y, Z is just a bit of a pointless exercise. Hmm. What's your thoughts on Two Free Natasha? Oh, do you want to go? No, no. It's a crier. Definitely a crier. <laughs> I think, like we said earlier, like we, you would have loved it if you like saw wings. And even though they didn't come to Europe, that's like a thing I like. It would have been nice to go to Europe just for that song, really. It's nice for when you sing it together, back to them. And obviously, when we go to Korea, if they were to sing something like that, it'd be nice because obviously they'll feel at home because everyone's singing back to them. Nice to experience it, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think this is the first proper army song that they've mm. done, isn't it? I also wrote that it's a different take of on standing up to the haters. So it's like more like let's come together and like we can exist in the happiness on our own and we don't really need to bother about convincing people who don't want to be convinced like it's fine and on the back of the convo that we just had about 21st century girl right and how it's got a lot of romantic lyrics but it's not a romantic song Mm. I think this really drives on that authenticity around that relationship yeah because two free is very very soft it's very gentle they could have easily used those you're amazing you're beautiful you can do it type of lyrics mm-hmm. but then that would be a romantic song to one person yeah whereas actually when bts are trying to convey emotion to army it's very much about we're all in this together i want you to feel more good days than bad days as opposed to i really fancy you as an individual <laughs> yeah. does that make sense yeah. so that's where it becomes it becomes a lot less like i know a lot of people don't understand it but it was a lot less of a cringe worthy relationship because you're not it's a relationship of mutual love and care for yeah. a group to another group yeah and I think the the line in the chorus is interesting when uh, they go like obviously hold my hand and smile but then they go hold each other's hands and smile yeah I think the sort of being able to relate to a group of like like-minded and happy loving individuals is, <laughs> is a powerful thing in itself you don't necessarily need to be at the BTS concert but obviously if you are then, then that's great <laughs> and maybe all the armies next to each other all held hands yeah and it was really beautiful like in the Hunger Games yeah <laughs> <laughs> all about the death <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it's but it's nice though like I've, I've heard of people like seeing someone with like a cookie gearing in the wild I mean like oh my god are you I mean, like it creates wild. this like instant connection yeah but, but from people who maybe don't live in London and they're not like all around all the time that's how me and Sam met in college and I like turned me lock screen on and she saw a picture of JK and she was like Chungook and I was like <gasps> and then she instantly were like oh my god oh my god we, like sat down and we're like who's your bias who's your bias like what's your favorite song what's this what's that what's this and then like that were it and just friends ever since yeah um all right and performances we only linked two yeah so really should we do the first one yeah so there's one from the wings tour in japan where they wear the oversized shirts and glasses and on arm and sugar wear glasses not the other ones <laughs> <laughs> christine's gone full solo stand energy arm <laughs> and sugar <laughs> when they wear glasses no just my favorite no what's two wearing your don't favorite also wears glasses okay so don't hate me no um, they look great they do i hope he's got a choker yeah tay has got the backwards beret it's really yes. great but onto the other performance that we linked and our intense amounts of research <laughs> yeah. um because this clip is doesn't do it sufficient justice so no. we linked the clip to the third muster the 2016 purple ocean project by army and BTS's reaction to it. So the boys come out, they're all wearing sort of Letterman, some Letterman jackets. They do the song, they're singing it to Army, Army's singing it back. And when they come out, all the Army bombs are purple. The K Army have covered their Army bombs with like a little purple bag. Mm. And at the end, they talk about how, oh, I can't believe you've done this. This is a surprise event for us. This is a really beautiful army time. Yeah. True. Oh. Just kept, keeps me like, I'm so touched. I'm so touched. So, I'm so, so touched. touched. How did and you... Like, and Hobie were like, oh my God, how'd you do this? Yeah, so, yeah. How did you get it organised? We're meant to be here performing for you. 
Hobie says it looks like a uh, like a trail of flowers, like in yeah. the song. I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the flower path. And they're like, oh, it really does look like a flower path. Yeah. Then this clip ends, but there is a follow-up clip of Tay where he says, do you know what purple means? Hmm. Purple's the last colour of the rainbow, and therefore I purple you means I will love you until the end of time. Yeah. And in that moment was the invention of Borahe. Yes. So that's who it goes to. It goes to Kayame. They actually, like, triggered this random port from Te. Yeah. And oh, also, isn't that just gorgeous? It really is. It's really gorgeous. But then also there's a bit where all the other members are like, oh, really? Is that what purple means? And Te's like, no, I just made that up. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I just made it up. Yeah. But then I derived that meaning, I'd say, from his making that up. Yeah. And it's also really beautiful with, like, when they sing the song, they look quite emotional but then at the end also they sort of take all the music out for the final chorus and then they one by one sort of start putting their mics out to the audience and then the audience sort of sings the last chorus on their own like yeah that's when we got bar here yeah and that's really beautiful yeah all right is that the end of two three that's the end of two three what a lovely and brilliant song all right should we wrap this up then interlude wings tasha you did this one yes i did so, Interlude Wings was written by P Dog, Adora, RM, J Hope, Sugar, and produced by P Dog. It is quite a, a shorter song. Mm-hmm. There's not many lyrics, just to the fact that they go, whoa, whoa, for like most of it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and the la 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 is also. Yeah. 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 Spread, spread, spread. Just the same Take words me over to again. The sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many of the same words over yeah. and over. RM just got sick of writing them and he's just like, use that word again and again. Yeah. <laughs> so the first lyric is JK, he says, Take me to the sky. RM says, Put your hands up in the sky. Yep. Yeah. If you're feeling the vibe, come on. If you're ready to fly, let's do it. It's just a hyper song. So we've gone on a bit of a low with two, three. Now he's like boosting you back up just to finish off the album. I'll do J Hope's verse. Okay. okay, you can do that. Remember when I was a child, I didn't have big worries. A small feather was going to become my wings. And with those wings, I was going to fly. I believed and I was full of faith and laughter. A beautiful verse. It really was. Mm hmm. Then Aram says, I went down a path people told me not to. Obviously, with a career chosen to be a rapper and an idol, people around him, such as his parents, wanted him to pursue a conventional job because he had really good grades. Obviously, he's like genius and he was in the top 1% of his class. However, he decided he wanted to choose his passion. And then he says, I did things people told me not to. I wanted things I should not want. I would be hurt, hurt again. So obviously in his culture probably would have been more conventional to actually listen to like what your elders are saying to you rather than veering your own path. He's saying he did things that he weren't meant to do, even though like it's not like he did a bad thing. It's just he went against the norm and proved everyone wrong. That was when I had my epiphany about <laughs> the album being about temptation and the evil being about wanting the fame and the fortune was mm-hmm. when that line came in. I was like, oh, right. So I think they're picking up the themes again with this song. Like I went to Seoul, I started my idol career rather than study hard at school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says, you can call me stupid. I just smirk. I don't want to be successful doing something I don't want to do. I push myself. Word. <laughs> yes. Oh, are you late to vibes, right? Word. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> and then Sugar says, I believe in myself. My back hurts because it's to sprout my wings. I believe in you. I may be weak now, but in the end, it will be an incredible jump. Fly, fly, up in the sky. Fly, fly, get them up high. This is the path you choose, dude. Don't doubt yourself. <laughs> This is the first fly. Uh, the fly, fly, get him up high is a reference to Epic High. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Aram and Sugar have credited this song for being one of the first songs that inspired them for their rapping career. Yeah, because Epic High have a song called Fly, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so 
the verse from Sugar is pretty much him just like telling you to chase your dreams and that will be the most fulfilling thing in life, even though it's hard. Looking down on people that are younger and not as far ahead in life as him, he's encouraging people to do it, but he knows that like most people probably maybe don't do it just because it's, it's a scary thing to do. I guess it's it's something that you, everyone, you know, you want to be a teenager, you become a teenager and you want to become a child, but you can't go back. So I guess it's Sugar's, like, big shout to just be like, do what you want to do because Annie lived in and look where it could have been. Mm-hmm. And then the chorus is, take me to the sky if I can fly free, if I can run away forever. Jimin, Jin and V say if my wings could fly i would pierce through the heavy air and fly i fly i fly higher than higher than higher than the sky i fly i fly i fly i think at this point they must have just like <laughs> run out of things to say we'll repeat it yeah it's really so like to fit the melody ability as it's well the melody. those parts that are like na 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 la 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 are often like there for the audience to be able to sing along with you mm-hmm. but i don't vibes yeah Yep, so they all say, spread, spread, spread my wings. La, 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 I love how you said that, but completely out of tune. Yeah. Yeah. La, 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 la. Spread, spread, spread. Okay. They'll listen to the song. They'll know what I'm on about. And then the outro is, wings are made to fly, 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 fly. If my wings could fly. Yeah. That's the whole song. Uh, it's really dancey, isn't it? Aram said that it was a completely new genre for them. So when he got the track, he really doubted it. He didn't think it fit. He didn't know where it fit. And he wrote some lyrics. He wrote, if my wings could fly, if I could fly forever. And he wrote those for a different track, a different melody. And then <laughs> Bang Pity and P-Dog put those lyrics over this backing track and released it <laughs> he liked it eventually and bang pd was right but he definitely didn't know that they were going to use the lyrics from the other song that he'd recorded on this no um, but he must have re-recorded it like it wasn't like they just yeah. pulled the wool over his eyes but like yeah they wanted to use his lyrics for the song essentially yeah i think it as opposed to the intro i've written that it interprets sort of ambition and drive in a positive way rather than as as greed mm. I think it ties the album in a ties the album up nicely in a in nice a little knot because yeah it picks up the the themes again and twists the way that those same sort of basic emo- emotions are understood and it also like picks up the topic of seeing something in a good light as opposed to a bad light so the like bad and good juxtaposition is picked up again along with the with the theme of of ambition and following your dreams. Mm. And the um, fact that the wings are made to fly, right? Yeah. Like, you don't sprout them and grow them and go through all of the pain and then not use them. Yeah. Like, even if you're tempted, you put in that effort to get there. Yeah. So you should utilise that and make the most of that and enjoy that. It also picks up the theme of wings in general, right? Because they're not <laughs> a lot it's called of... wings? Yeah, exactly. Mm, <laughs> it's interesting. The, the album is called Wings, you know? There's not, not loads of songs about wings, really. Tell me more about the wings. But No, I... All I sort of meant to say about the wings was that, again, it, the opener and Bloods When Tears have the themes of the fallen angel who'd lost, lost the wings in this one. It's about them getting the wings and using the wings and sort of army have given us our wings and we can fly sort of towards their uh, their new goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, performances, we only have one of this because it's the interlude. And obviously, we know that later on they release the full version called outro wings which is a longer song Mm -hmm. the interlude wings they performed on the wings tour which makes sense so they go around in the carts they're wearing the glasses just rm and sugar wearing the glasses (laughs) yeah some of the others who knows what they're wearing but they're wearing the glasses (laughs) yeah rm and sugar glasses yes um it's from the same japan concert as the two three performance that we talked about the one with the shirts and in saitama in japan yeah, they go around the car, and then there's the bit that Hobie does. The um, when I say fly, you say hi, fly, hi, fly, hi. Fly, fly, hi. hi. Yeah, we don't. Hobie looks but, great. Yeah, and I love her trousers. Hobie's a choker. Yeah, and then all the confetti rains down. Yeah, it's a hype song. It'd be fun to like jump around at the concert to this one. I think it's an ender, isn't it? Yeah.
Right, are we happy with the album? Should we move on? We are. Should we give up some awards? We have some awards. Okay, we are. Spread, spread, spread your awards. <laughs> are we going to spread them? Who knows? Let's see. <laughs> Who wants to start? Best lyric. Best lyric for me comes out of two free. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I feel like I'm being really like typical, and I gave it to Hobie. <laughs> I knew you would. I read this and I was like, this is going to be the answer. (laughs) Well, I I try really hard. I do try and think really broadly. Right. But the reason it's this one, it's me a shadow behind the stage, me in the depth of the darkness. I didn't want to show everything, including my pain. But because I'm still unaccustomed, I just wanted to make you smile. I just wanted to do good. And I know that that's the same lyric that Hobie gave in Boy With Love. But... I love it. Yeah. When Obi wants to make me smile, okay. it just hits, man. Yeah, it does. It's brilliant. It's good. I love it. I'm sorry. Okay. And I should have said, also, we're going to compare these awards to our solos awards and just say, this was what I picked for the solos and this is what I think is the overall best lyric. So you okay, let me song. get my awards from last time up then. <laughs> and obviously for the Wink solos, I also gave my best lyric to Hobie. But I gave him to the a veteran around both feet for her family. Failure is the mother of success. Mother, I learned that passion and sincerity from you. That is a good lyric. Of okay. the two, it's the one from Mama. Okay. Because the one from Two Free is brilliant, but it's too close to the one with Boy of Love. Yeah. Fine. Tasha? I gave it to not an individual member. They all kind of say it, which is hoping for more good days in Two Three also. Oh, thank okay. you. It was JK that I picked for the solos. You make me begin. You made me again. So, Which one do you want overall? I'll go for this week's one, just to mix it up. Good, good. What about you? Okay, so we've all picked two, three. So I picked the it's okay, come on when I say one, two, three, forget it. Erase all sad memories, hold my hand and smile. Also not an individual member, really. But that's just a really reassuring, lovely lyric. What was your one from last week? Um, so oh, it was RM, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fear, which holds my hand. It's okay because everyone's in twos or threes. It's good that I have a friend too. I think that's still the best lyric. It is. Two or three is very comforting, but this is a genius turning of a phrase. And mm, you know, RM deserves my hand. Yep. Yeah, you're right. That is. All right, best rap. My best rap is Sugars in Cypher. For- oh, wow. Tell us. I just think he's it's a very iconic rap. I think everyone praised him for how like fast it was and everyone's like, Oh my god, that's so fast and then even people are watching a video of someone she were learning Korean and she were like, Right, this week's like like goal is to try like rap Sugar's part and she tried for like weeks and she was like, I can kinda do it, but she won't really on it. It's just it's just too good. I completely agree. I've, I've written, I'm sorry to pull the bias card, but it's it's just Jungi's Cypher rap. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> Honestly, it's just, it's so good. I, I thought this like way before we ever did the podcast, but I was to listen to Cypher in the gym and I was like, he's just showing off here. It's just so fast and so many like different tones of voices and like just all the like English and the intersperse and the like, yeah, phrasing and yeah. We bow down. But the you twos do? last week? I picked um, J-Hope's Mama. So, you know, mm. I love them really, both of the other rap members. Best one, I'd probably, I'd have to go with Sugars, just because I feel like you can praise Mama in other ways. Yeah, agreed. My best rap for the solos, I picked Yungi's First Love. But that was more, for that one, I read out a lot of lyrics. So that one was more about the lyrics, whereas this one is definitely more about the flow. Yeah, the rap in Cypher is better. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got with? I, I, I've cheated across all my ones. Right. Um, um, I went for a soap, best rap. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Because I didn't want to pick. I went for soap in Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Okay. On the lyrics. Before I knew about RM's verse, <laughs> back when I thought that RM's verse was innocent, I went with the soap, it doesn't matter if it hurts, tie me up so I can't escape, hold me tight and shake me up so that I can't come to my senses. So I wanted that from Hobie originally, 
thankfully Youngie comes straight after him with Kiss Me on the Lips, a secret just between the vo- the two of us. Deeply poisoned by the jail of you, I cannot worship anyone but you. And I knew the grail was poisoned, but I drank it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then I just combined them and yeah. said, I'm going to take these eight lines for my best rap. Right. And I'm going to give it to Team Soap in nice. Blood, Sweat and Tears. Okay. Well, I think that's good. I think they they're, deserve some recognition for their raps in and my, that one. My previous one was Youngie First Love. I give it to Blood, Sweat and Tears. Really? That's the overall. Okay. All right. Best vocal. I'll go first this time. I picked. Jimin's blood, sweat, and tears through the gritted teeth. Yep. Goes, bitch, I'm no more. You can just really feel him like battling to resist the temptation. I think it's really evocative in that way, and he sings it perfectly, and it's gorgeous. Jimin's opening in blood, sweat, and tears sends chills down my spine. Yeah, <laughs> it's what I wrote for my best vocal. Who did you give best vocal to last month? Mateus, High Notes, and Stigma. I still think those are really impressive, especially for a lower registry singer like Tayas. Hmm. But I think Jimin's opening vocals are iconic. So I think he gets it. Agreed. I went Jin at the start of Awake. It's still Jimin. Jimin at the 20 years above Jin and Awake. Sorry, Jin. What do you think, Dash? I'll go with V in Blood, Sweat and Tears because I like his deepness. Mm. And I think I'll pick that against me solo one which was gin in a week all right dance break i thought this one was difficult i mean it's mostly difficult because i don't want to give every single award to plus one tears but there's a clear clearly somewhere it can go come on so i've picked 21st century <laughs> yeah i just thought it was cute you know but let me let me know what your clear one is it's clearly hobby and intro by mix evil oh god yeah of course yeah clearly yeah but no, go, go 21st century girl. No, I didn't me. have any. Tell me which bit is so amazing of that compared to Hobie's I just entire thought... dancing repertoire I... of intro and Boy Meets Evil. Honestly, I kind of forgot about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I also, this is not a dance break, it's like a dance solo. But anyway, it's fine. You're, you're right. And what did you pick for your dance break last time? I did the begin. So did I. Choreo. Which one's better? I think Hobie's is more challenging. I think if you're looking for a dance break, then maybe it's JK. I mean, the challenge is the two performances that we see from Hobie. He doesn't sing as well, and JK does sing. Let's sure. split it. I'll give my overall one to Hobie. You can give yours to JK and begin. Because I'm not shouldn't give... it be upset. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even Fine. though you didn't think that. No. Fine. Okay. Natasha. I've picked the hip thrust part in Blood Sweat and Tears. If y'all weren't going to pick it, I had to. And my last week's one was JK and Begin. It's a hard one to choose from. All JK, centre JK, or like the actual centre part of JK. (laughs) (laughs) Do I love JK for his dancing or his crotch? (laughs) Um, So I obviously said to go for his crotch. Okay, great. <laughs> and the other boys' crotches. It's like an OT7 crotch, isn't it? Like yeah, an, no. or, or like a six, or the one in the middle. And like you can pretend that you're the one in the middle. The one in the middle, yeah. have a really fun time. <laughs> yeah, and then die. Yeah, no, OT6. We don't even know who's in the middle. They're, they take it's turns. Rage I think it's... Tr- if you're like Tay, over. you're Tay in the middle, because you're not losing it, lowering with Tay. No. And you're in the middle, and yeah, that's the best dance, I think. And then you get the upward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fine. Great pick. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Okay, best life performance. It's 21st century girl in the Halloween outfits. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I I know. I shouldn't have let you go first, because I knew. (laughs) I feel like sometimes with the performances, I really look out on the silly. Yeah, I really, I really venture towards the silly rather than the hot. And actually, I put shout out to the Borough Hair performance. The oh two my God, there's so many. In the Purple Ocean, yeah. Yeah. But I really wanted to give it to every time I ever see Blood, Sweat and Tears. And what did you choose last time? Last time I picked Jimin and Lai. Oh, <laughs> they're both Jimin. <laughs> wow. they, the MVP? they couldn't be. They couldn't be more different. They yeah. couldn't be more duality. Yeah. Uh, Jimin. My overall performance for Wings should go to Jimin and Lai. Yeah. That's not true. My overall performance for Wings should go to Blood, Sweat and Tears. <laughs> but yeah, I have not but... picked it for either category. <laughs> so 
So I'm giving it to Jimin and Lai. Fine. But can I give it to Jimin and Lai at the start of Mama when Jimin and Hobe is there? Can I just yeah. give it to Mama? That's what I want to give it to. Mama 2016. Mama 2016. That's what I'm giving it. Yeah, fine. That's acceptable. Oh, fine. Natasha? I also went for the um, Halloween 21st century girl performance, but also because of the Pak Choi Jimin, but obviously also because JK didn't get an outfit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's wearing his fur. Yeah. <laughs> JK's not a bunny, he's a man. Yes. <laughs> what was your pick last? Last week was Jimin in Lai. And what's your overall? 21st century girl, because justice for JK. Awesome choice. Hashtag. Solid. Right, go on. Bring us back. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, these are these are professional artists who work day and night to perform us. They're entertainers, you know. And like, we stick our awards on, on them the dancing bench, right? around in Halloween outfits. Yeah. I'm not unhappy about it. Maybe they should come up with like a silly award. Nah. No, no. I think it should be an a level playing field. I I wanted to pick 2016 Mama, but then I was like, oh, but that one has fire. And then I wanted to give a shout out to the Cypher. So I'm going to pick the Cypher medley. Because I've done Mama now. Yeah. Given it to but Mama. also because I wanted to give a shout out to the Cypher. Like overall, I didn't write that in now. I've already had that. So yeah, the Cypher. Um, Cypher medley. I love it. I also almost also picked the one where Yungi looks like a gangster. Because <laughs> I really love the energy of that performance. Um, but also, we work hard not to pick our biases. We do, but like my bias isn't the cipher, so it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, my one last week was J-Hope's performance of Mama on the Wings tour. Oh, I think it's a cipher. No, it's not! It's <laughs> not! I gave it to Mama 2016, which has got Hobby in. And Hobby's in on the site for Mudley, so it's fine. Okay, best look. So I picked Jin oh. in the dinner party scene in Buzz When Tears. Nice. So, yeah, because he's wearing this, like, white, plain white shirt, but he's got the, like, pink hair. Mm. Would you say it's pink? Pink, like, lilac but mostly pink. And there's this one clip of him where he's, like, at the dinner party, I think he's standing up. And he sort of turns his head from one head, from one side to the other. And I'm just like, wow, you look like a, like a porcelain doll. Mm. Like he really just looks at the really beautiful. I was into I that. Yeah. Nice. What was it last week? Oh, it was last um, month. Yeah, last month it was Jimin in the sparkly shirt in the live performance. <sighs> but I think still Jim. Okay. Yep. Natasha, yeah. best luck. I gave it to a certain vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I had to get to Jim in in his little outfit because he just knows how to win your heart. And from last week, it was I don't know which one I actually picked because I've got three written down. I've got Jim in Lai, Grape June, and V Twilight look, and I'm pretty sure I'll probably get it to Twilight. So I'm gonna have to get to Twilight again. Okay, well, overall, it's V's Twilight look. I think V deserves a shout as best look. Agreed. You're up. I am giving my best look to OT7 in Blood, Sweat and Tears. No! I'm not taking any less. I'm not taking any less. I'm giving it. That's why I'm giving it. I'm giving it. It's it's impossible to distinguish those boys in levels of attractiveness from each other in that entire video. So I'm giving it to them all. I'm giving an OT7 in Blood, Sweat and Tears award. I just can't. Jimmy when he's in the jacket and he's got the grey hair and then he does the big up pull. Mm. Junie when he's got the like... Junie looks great. Cut That's over of does. the black jacket with the white shirt underneath and he's mm. got the grey and then he's going to drink the absinthe oh, yeah. and the smoke's coming out of his mouth. JK when he's suspended in the yeah. shirt with the black and the clock on it. Even Sugar when he's in the, the how, one with how the... How dare you say even Sugar. sugar. <laughs> she, even Sugar. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> what's it called? The Masador, not Masador. It's what's not it Masador. It's like military. Uh, it, style yeah, Sugar shirt when he's got his jacket. military jacket. B when he jumps out the window. I think B when, when he's at has the, the sheet over him. Yeah, Jimmy when he's got the red choker. Hobie Farrell. Any of the boys when they do the floor choreo. 
Yeah. There's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. It's O two seven in Blood, Sweat and Tears. Please. Fine, fine, fine. Um, <laughs> they're just all too, too hot. Too, too beautiful, they're too yeah. hot in Blood, Sweat and Tears. Yeah. We'll allow it. All right. Thank you. Shall we do the skip then, the dreaded skip? That's a sin that we do every month. <laughs> <laughs> and we should be punished. And we should. Yeah, thanks for coming to me. Time yeah. <laughs> Drink my poisoned grail. Yeah. Please, please. Um, okay, last is my skip. Um, last. Last. last my yeah. Uh-uh. But you just think it's a bit boring. I don't know. It's not, it's fine. It's. What was your skip last week? My skip last week was Stigma. I, but it's definitely still lost. <laughs> you just don't like it. No. I mean, it's fine. It's like, I don't actually skip it, but like, I do think it's a bit, it's not vapid, but it's not like, the complexity is not really there, which is why I was yeah, surprised when an RM was like, it's my, it's favorite. my favorite. I was like, wow, okay. Nah. <laughs> I guess he, that, he must just really like the melody or whatever. Maybe that's why he said it, because there was nothing about it, so he knew he had to push it. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. And you're skipping it over stigma? Yeah. Fine. Am I wrong? It's my skip. So the problem is, is that the lyrics for Am I Wrong are better, mm. but I hate the sampling. Yeah, I don't I think the sampling fits. I don't think it sounds like a BTS song. Then even the fact that we talked about the lyrics and they're really strong and political, and then they couple it with this ridiculous dance <laughs> that takes away any of the meaning, it's wrong. Am I wrong? Is my skip? I skipped stigma last week with a heavy heart. Yeah, same. And I will gladly bring stigma back into my listening and stick Am I wrong in the bin. Fine. I'm gonna skip. Boy meets evil. <gasps> I swear. <laughs> you. It were a toss between boy meets evil and lost. And then I was just thinking about it. I was like, you just said like if I had to, I'd bring that one back. And I'm like, if I had to, I'd listen to Lost rather than Boy Meets Evil. So it'd have to be that one. And last week, it was First Love and Get Rid of Both. Leanne put a new <laughs> rule on it, so I'm allowed to put a new rule in as well. I'm allowed to get no. rid of both. <laughs> this is not the make the album better by cutting songs. This is like, if gunpoint to, to the head, you have to cut a song. If we're making new rules, that's what I'm picking. Carnage. <laughs> Wow. We were, we're both, here. We know where you live. <laughs> we'll come and cut you. On behalf of both of our my bias here to my America. Bias. Yeah. <laughs> You're not invited to Busan any longer. <laughs> nah, nah, I will redeem myself. I will redeem myself. Get ready. All right. Okay. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that coming. <laughs> didn't either. Stay tuned for more. I, I knew the whole way through that I had a clanger to drop. Okay. She just kept it secret. She did. She skipped them both. Yeah. All right. Best track. Do you want to go first on that one? Blood, Sweat and Tears. Cut above the rest. League of its own. And last week I did give it to Mama. It's still Blood, Sweat and Tears. Yeah. I feel the same way. It's Blood, Sweat and Tears. I really wanted to give it to the Cypher, but it's Blood, Sweat and Tears because it's just it's it's whatever. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, yeah, I picked Lila last week and it's still Blood, Sweat and Tears. Well, I'm going to pick the Cypher because I'm a nice person. Um, last week I picked Mama, and this week I'll I'll have Cipher just because Blood Sweat and Tears is good, but it just don't hype you up same as Cipher. And as well, that was like kind of last type of Cipher, and everyone always wanted a Cipher of Cipher after that. So this is like top tier. Mm. I applaud it. It's great. Yeah, uh, I think Blood Sweat and Tears is probably one of the only ones that I'm confident in missing in the whole lyrics the whole way through. Oh yeah, yeah. Just I well I'll go with it. Peter Mama. <laughs> Peter Mama. Peter Red from Mama. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's not clear. That's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and actually, you have redeemed because the cypher's got Youngie and Herbie oh, and yeah. Judy. Yeah. Okay. MVP. 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 Okay. Natasha, you go first. Oh, I've picked RM. <laughs> oh, that brings me so much joy. Tell me why. Um, Because... Uh, his involvement in pretty much everything. And as this was my first comeback, I probably got, well, I lie. I didn't get bias wrecked from this, but he contributed it to being my bias wrecker from this music video and era. Oh, I feel bad now. Yeah, I'm giving mine to Hobie, but I'm thinking about the night when we watched Wings and I said that 
Aaron was a real man and all of the other boys were just boys in a boy band. <laughs> yeah, say that on the podcast when you cancelled. <laughs> she was under the influence when she said this. <laughs> The temptation no, had taken. I'm, I'm actually, no, I think you're right. I think Aram has a lot to do, but in the V Life, Aram speaks very highly of Hobie and the work that Hobie did. So I think my MVP for Wings is Hobie. One for the intro, for in Blood, Sweat and Tears, the tie me up, but I'll drink you deep in my throat, like the whiskey yeah. and the choreo mm-hmm. that goes with that, with the low dancing into the roundhouse kick in Blood, Sweat and Tears for his line in two free that I want to make you happy and then him sort of hyping up in wings yeah and mama as mama comes in so I was thinking about Aram and if Aram and reflections is greater than Hobie and mama within wings and I don't think it is no I think Junie gets a lot of credit but I think it's the I lose Aram all of the time because of the choreo yeah because he is much much weaker on the choreo and the dance and this one is choreo heavy this one's choreo heavy I give my MVP to Hobie again okay my MVP so I went through a process with this as well because it was hard so I had three candidates that I talked through so I had Jimin I had Aram and I had Hobie um so I had Jimin because of lie of lie yeah and because of his opener on Blood, Sweat and Tears and his sheer sexual magnetism I've put. <laughs> and Pak Choi. And Pak Choi. And his solo song and his short film were my topics. Mm. I had RM for his writing contributions. He wrote on all of the songs except First Love, Mama, Lie and Stigma, which are solos by the members that didn't need his help to write their solos. Oh, yeah. And the concept also also feels very him, like it's their first big literary concept. And we know that he had an interest in, like, the good and evil in people. He he finds that interesting, doesn't he? And then j because he does the intro and the insane dance that goes with it. He has an absolutely stellar solo in terms of the song, lyrics, and performance for his role in writing the melodies for solos, songs like Jin's, which Aram talked about. He also talked about j being the sort of guide for the album. And I think the theme of the ambition like that takes over and verges on becoming greed it's a theme that sort of resonates with him mm. again like i said he's picked up that theme in disease and again in arson most recently and also he yeah he shines in all the like quite dance heavy performances he across this album so it, it's j <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i thought i honestly thought i'd give it to jim hope it's really the MVP. hobby is the hobby is the one Okay, scores. Scores on the doors, yeah. Who wants to go first? Natasha, you look oh. excited. No, you don't want to go first. Okay. Well. Okay, so I want to rescore one of my previous scores. Okay. I'm going to give this a 6.5, but at current, I've got three 6.5s. Right. So I've now got Wings, I've got Love Yourself Her, and i got Map of the Soul Persona. Right. And I'm going to rescore two or seven Love Yourself Her. Really? Yes. So one, I wanted to do it to map with a soul persona, but actually, you know what's changed is yeah. how I feel about Gogo. Yeah. Because I love Gogo now, yeah. and I keep talking about how I'm so sad that I skipped Gogo because there are no skips on that album. But there are no skips on that that's album. That's why I had to skip. So that's what I'm right. doing. I'm going to give Love Yourself Her a seven, and then Wings comes in at a solid six point five. Okay. Which feels right. Yeah. Feels good for me. Mm-hmm. Christine. Okay. So. I would preface this by saying that this is a bit of a personal bias of me having a particular interest in the themes of this era. Mm-hmm. But for me, this one's a seven. <gasps> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Christine. I, yeah. But the I, same as Map of the Soul Persona. Yeah. I think it is. It's the, you, you scored it the same as Map of the Soul Persona. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you my reasoning. So it's I said it's largely due to the very intellectual concept that same that seemed to have sent them on the paths towards the intellectual concepts to come. Mm -hmm. But then I also thought that the solos were of a very high overall quality. Mm -hmm. It has the best cipher, the blood, sweat and tears. That is just such a banger of a lead track. The most beautiful MV ever. And all the art. All the art, all the art references, all the literary references, all like, you know, I eat that shit up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All the so, references. Love well, it. yeah, those as well. 
love those. And it has the first army song and the short films. The short films are just oh, yeah. like so easy to overlook, but they're such like an interesting yeah. thing to have made us in oh, conjunction with an album. And, and I universe. think I just want to mm, maybe all right get that out there. Like the short films exist in there pieces of art like if you piece them together and you know I had so much fun like doing all the symbolism and like mapping them all out and stuff so yeah I had a seven fun time with this album you had a whale of a time on this I did you were just like (laughs) I was living life honestly bringing all the references all the other things I really was so yeah for me this is a seven okay fine you can keep it as a seven and map this up son but you can't have any of us no, I can have, I'll have as many sevens as I want. If you can pick it up to seven, best like, <laughs> then I'll just pick fucking seven every week. <laughs> I did think with the breaking of the rules, it would descend into carnage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Natasha, we will reinstate the full rules for next week. Yeah. I am going to give it a 6.5. I like it a lot. What I've took into consideration is it will be my first comeback and it's still great like me the thoughts that I had about it then probably hadn't changed and the reason why I won't get a seven would be just for the fact that they didn't come to Europe they've got to try harder for yeah, that seven you right take that they got to try harder <laughs> keep trying go back in time and come to Europe and Natasha will regrade if thank you, you don't come to Europe for any future trams will not give you a seven on no, Natasha won't because she's got integrity yeah, she does yeah <laughs> all right well I think that wraps us up doesn't it so that wow. gives us a full wrap on the Wings album if it's supposed to say, let, let me just say that especially for me who's obsessed with all the symbolism and the art and the references this is a huge undertaking this album is a big piece of work it's a beast yeah <laughs> well, like like Jeannie said they made it deliberately yeah they did no. it's a deliberate album and they thought of us while making it nice and thank you for this album yeah nice all right should we spin should i'm excited to spin going? this time because yeah where we've are not we spent going? a while right we're spinning the wheel let's do it Nice. Oh my God. We're going back to love yourself. Is where that... are we going? Love yourself, tear. Love yourself, tear. That's where we're going. A lot of work to do between now and then. So let's sign off now. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, you can rate us on Apple and Spotify if you want to. There's a five star button just there waiting for you. Um, <laughs> if you want to tell us what you thought about our picks or that you hated our picks or whatever. Tell us to go back to following the rules. Because we love ourselves. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Where can they tell us, Natasha? You can follow us on Instagram at generationbts underscore or email us at generationbts, all the albums at gmail.com. Perfect. All the thoughts are welcome. Right, so I've been Christine. I've been Leanne. And I've been Natasha. And we have been... Generation, Generation BTS. BTS. Yay! Yay! Yay!